Next, we have Yakuza Kiwami 2 run by Froob. So make sure to. Oh. All right. Thank you very much. So, Brendo has a $500 donation and they send a haiku. It says, Come on, everyone. Half Life Alex needs our help. Let's all do our part. And with that, it's time for the grittiest, most. We may or may not be live right now. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Something may have happened. Are we live? All right. So with that, sorry about that. We had a technical issue uh, over here. Um, but with that, let's get to the grittiest, most uh, most hardcore crime simulator ever with the uh, Yakuza Kiwami 2 with Froob. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well tonight. Uh, this is Yakuza Kiwami 2. Uh, we're going to be here for about two hours, so I'm just going to go ahead and get on with the game. So I'm going to start from new game on easy. You might think that it's a joke because it's on easy. Trust me. It's not, you'll see. So let's get this run going in three, two, one, go. So this is technically the second game on the Dragon Engine, which was made for the newer games. First one being Yakuza 6 and then Kabami 2. A couple afterwards, including Judgment and the upcoming Like a Dragon at the end of this year, which looks to be absolutely outstanding. But as we start the run, uh, you'll see a couple of cutscenes here. Uh, basically, we see, it's the early 1980s, and we see a detective named Kawara entering a burning building. This incident will come to, to call it later in the game the Jingwon Massacre. So just remember that for now. That's Kazuma there, uh, foster father. We'll talk about him a little later on. And basically, Kawara enters this building building, uh, notices Kazuma of the Tojo up to no good, and he saves a woman and her child. Then we gain control of Kazuma Kiryu, he's our protagonist of the game. He is here at this graveyard with his adopted daughter, let's call her Haruka, uh, one year after the events of Yakuza 1. So every Yakuza game has a good art tutorial, so it's teaching us how to do basic combos. So you start off with square attacks, which are your light attacks, and then triangle, which are your strong attacks. We then go into the second part of the tutorial, where things are going to mix it up a tiny bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick hit. Oh, I could have got the quick block off. Nice, that really happens. That's good. That's good marathon luck. Now we're waiting for a second hit, and we need to evade. Now, the unfortunate thing is these guys have a quick kick. This guy's going to be the one. Yep, he's moving towards me quite menacingly. That's how you can tell. We're going to now focus our lock on. If you see that guy at the back there, his name is Teradoc. I found the one that survives. Interesting. You have to do a heat action to finish off this tutorial. You can only do it at two different places in the graveyard, which is over there by Terrada, or where we did it there, or with the ladle, which is in the bucket at that end. So basically, the way that we do this in this run is basically we try and manipulate the enemy to one side of the graveyard, usually that side because the ladle's there, and if somebody's at the other end because of lovely ragdoll physics, then we can just grab a ladle and run over there. Um, but essentially, Terrada, was, Terrada took over as the Tojo Japan chairman, and unfortunately, Terrada's not done too good and is dead. He got assassinated by those Omi Alliance uh, members who came along. And we are now going to go back to Kamurocho. We are Kazuma Kiryu, who is the ex Tojo Fourth Chairman. We're going to be buying a couple of drinks here. These vending machines were new in the Dragon Engine thanks to Yakuza 6. All of these drinks that we get from the vending machines all have completely different properties to them. The Poseidon Power that I bought, that's a moth, hi. Uh, the Poseidon Power that I bought is actually a sprint drink, it gives us unlimited stamina. Um, which allows us to basically run everywhere. And we also got a thing called Citrus Cider, also giant traffic goes. So the Citrus Cider gives us a medium attack buff. It's not the largest one. You'll be seeing the largest one in a little bit, but we actually need some Citrus Cider for one, safekeeping, and two, to do a certain boss strat later on with. So the game's gonna tutorialize us now about storing weapons. We can't actually skip any of these tutorials so far. This is automatic. I can't do anything about this until we get to the screen. Now we equip our weapon. As you can see here, one enemy survives. Every single tutorial has one enemy that survives until the very end, apart from the final tutorial, which is coming up after this. Here we're now gonna get taught about learning, uh, leveling stats. We're gonna be leveling strong charge attack. You saw we did the strong light attack in the previous tutorial. I'll talk about that in a little bit. We're gonna do gear now. 
in this game, you have different gear sets, so we get a red binding. We can buy some red beads at one point in the run that will increase our attack. But we've been we've been rerouting this run uh, over the past like two or three weeks, and there's been a lot of changes. And we've actually found that those beads that we used to buy to get a little attacked off with that bracelet actually causes us to have too much damage for the final boss for a certain boss strategy. So we won't be getting the actual gear set of that. <laughs> But there's basically a whole bunch of equipment that we can get in the game, some of which are amazing in terms of the run and some which aren't. You're also going to see here a heat attack. That guy moved to the left, so I have to aim towards him to do this. I actually got the other guy. That's unfortunate because this guy has the most of the HP out of everybody. That's a good move to do. And you can see ragdoll physics in this engine are fantastic. So that's the reason why you want to do a heat attack on him, because it actually takes off half of his HP, which then just leads you to having to attack him like once or twice. Um, one charge light attack after that is all it takes to take care of him. We want to take a sudden power here. We're going to take a little bit of a detour away from our story objective, which we basically need to steer the Tojo, because their chairman just got assassinated, we need to basically get a new Tojo chairman. And we've had the idea of giving it to someone called Daigo Dojima. Daigo Dojima being the son of uh, Sohei Dojima, who's a name you'll recognize if you play Yakuza 0 or Yakuza 1, and is also the son of Yayoi Dojima, who is currently the interim uh, Yakuza chairman. It doesn't matter if this enemy aggro hits us here, because this is an area trigger. I will get into the triggers a little bit later on, because we have found Daigo Dojima. He is here with his entourage at this club. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of light charges to try and take care of everybody. Hopefully I can get all three in a hit. Unfortunately he moved, so that's not going to happen. So I better get him. That's good. Take care of them. You can push, as you saw there, you can push enemies a little bit around in fights as well. So you can kind of line them up a little bit with trying to do a good combo. And now I get to introduce you all to what we affectionately call in the Yakuza series, Bike Strap. So what we're going to do is Daigo doesn't want the responsibility and he's still he's still grieving a little bit over events that happened in Yakuza Kiwami or Yakuza 1. We're going to get this bike. We're going to hit Dojima with this bike. But he doesn't normally attack. Interesting. But that should hopefully, yep, enable us to hit him again. You cancelled your combo mid... That doesn't... Okay. So what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to knock Daigo over. He goes on the ground. And then if you're close enough, you can hit him again with the bike. If you're not close enough again, what you want to do is you want to bait out either an attack or his gun. With the new dragon engine, unfortunately, we don't have as many ways of manipulating the boss's AI as we did with the old engine. But with Kiwami 2 especially, any boss that gets knocked down will then store up a guard or a dodge. And then you know at that point that when they stand up, if you haven't, if you can't hit them immediately, you know that you have to bait out either an attack or a guard or a dodge, and then you can hit them. Usually what will happen is if we're not too close to Daigo, we'll actually let him attack us first because we can use the strong attack of the bike with hyper armor to make sure that even if he hits us, it's not going to interrupt us from hitting him again. As soon as we get here to our second city, certain Boy Osaka, this lovely gentleman is going to stop us. We're going to say something very rude to him, and then we're going to grab this sign, Muscle Soda, and that's the end of that one. Muscle Soda is insanely overpowered. So a lot of this run is a lot of item management. So we're using this certain power because we're going to have to run from Kurokawa there over to the Grand. If you played Yak as a Zero, you'll recognize the Grand. Uh, we, when I say that we've gone and redone this run completely, Everything in this chapter that we used to do is now gone. So we used to get a very, very specific shopping list for chapter four. Instead, one of our members, uh, Josei Kuro, actually the other day found this lovely little plate that we're going to pick up, which none of us knew the existence of. And I've been running this game for like almost two years, so I'm kind of ashamed about that. But what we're going to do is all the civilians you see that are walking as well, by the way, they're all randomly generated. The ones that are standing here are usually fixed spawns. That gold plate there will give us, I believe, 100,000 yen. And we're going to need a lot of money in Chapter 4. We're going to speak to Kurokawa, who uh, spoke to us after we dealt with the guy earlier. He's going to tell us how to get into the VIP section of the Grand. Now, the good and the bad thing about the Dragon Engine is that we can skip literally like 95% of cutscenes. And unfortunately, that means you don't get to see some really cool stuff, such as the introduction here of the game's main antagonist, Ryuji Goda. Ryuji Goda is the head of the Omi Alliance's Goryu clan, and 
he basically knows who Kiryu is. Now, for this fight, very specifically, that guy on the right there, he has the most HP and defense out. Everybody here, go. Let's send him for a trip. Bye bye. So he's just gone down there. He's just gonna, gonna enjoy the festivities around the ground. We're gonna hopefully catch these two. That's a shame, but you can see there that I used the I used the charge light attack there to quickly cancel out of the strong attack that I did that missed, and that way I could hit the other guy a little quicker. So Ryuji says that at midnight there are gonna be fireworks over in Kamarocha. So we're gonna head over there now, get stopped by a couple of NPCs who say there's something going on. This section here. Every NPC that's running is randomized. Every single one that's stationary is not. We don't want to run into NPCs because unfortunately, as you'll see there, Kiryu will bounce off of the NPCs and we'll lose a tiny bit of time to that. So movement in this section is really kind of tricky. That was actually lucky because she pushed into me and I didn't push into her. That's unfortunate. And then there's a little bit of a hidden trigger for the next cutscene here. And the fireworks go off and you can't have a yak as a game without the Millennium Tower going bang. So. With that, we're going to head into Chapter 3, and I think I'm going to throw it over to my wonderful host now to see if there are any donations. All right, we we have more <laughs> than a few. Um, so KT sends $100 and says, let's get that Alex run. Uh, Omni Radiance sends $25, says longtime viewer, first-time donor. Thanks to all who made SGDQ 2020 possible during these uncertain times. Donation is going towards Half-Life Alex. Uh... However, we also have $25 from Daverboy, who says, How do we feel about a $5 Majima train? I'll even start us off with the first five cards. Choo-choo! <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. And yeah, I would love for us to see Half-Life Alex met. That, I believe, I might be wrong on this, but I believe that would be the first VR title at GDQ. So I want to see that. Right, let's, let's try and see if we can make that, shall we? And anyway, so we and Daigo came to Omi HQ. Uh, to broker a peace treaty. Uh, that was Terada's last will and testament was just, I want to, ah, let's start again. Uh, Terada wanted an alliance between the Tojo and the Omi. The Tojo, who we used to be affiliated with, or are still kind of affiliated with, uh, are the biggest Yakuza clan in the West, and the Omi are the biggest Yakuza clan in the East, aka, oh, I got that the wrong way around. Um, the, the West and the East, where basically, obviously, Osaka and Kamurocho in Tokyo. So, here, we actually got kind of lucky because my attack buff wasn't on. And because my attack buff wasn't on, it meant that this katana actually fell to the ground. Now, in... I'm going to have to be very careful. I'm going to take a few marathon safety strats in this run as of this point. In this chapter, beforehand, what we used to do was we used to pick up at least one spare wooden sword off the enemies to take for the late, for later parts of the run. Unfortunately, we don't do that now, and the rest of the run is kind of a little tight in regards to weapon routing. Uh, we can actually accidentally end up losing the weapons we need. I'm going to intentionally throw him. I really wish you hadn't flown over there, but <laughs> Dragon Engine physics. <laughs> so picking up again another wooden sword here, even though we don't take the wooden swords as spares, picking up the wooden sword and using it in this entire set piece is so much faster than trying to do the rest of this set piece normally. Because what we do normally for this encounter here is either use a charged light attack or use one of those vases or plates. There's one behind us. But with this wooden sword, as you'll see, hopefully, a single combo here. Let's get it and move forward for once. And again, this is the thing with the dragon engine is that sometimes you'll have sometimes you'll have enemies that will actually work with you and sometimes you won't. And that's a lot of a, that's a lot of the thing of Clam 2 run. Is that whilst I'm going through this run and doing all of these things, I'm gonna be paying close attention to one weapon durability, two how many drinks I've got left, and three kind of how enemies react. Because we have we have ways that we believe are ideal, and then ways that just don't happen. Um, but again, that's one of the fun things about this run. So I'm going to randomly kick that guy. He has a knife. Hopefully I can charge my strong here. I didn't get it in time. I'm just going to drop kick this door, don't worry. <laughs> this barricade is a very unique barricade in that it always takes three hits. There are barricades later in the run that will take either one hit from certain weapons, five normal punches, but these barricades always take three hits. It doesn't matter if you hit them with a sword, it doesn't matter if you hit them with a quick. That's unfortunate, I missed my first hit. Um, we're gonna go to the right here. This is a nameless katana. This is a very, very, I almost broke it there. That would have been bad. 
this Nameless Katana is one of the stronger weapons we can get in the early game for this run. Yeah. Three Muscle Soda left, which should be very good. If I could get out of here with two Muscle Soda remaining, I can actually delay getting a later drink uh, run. And then that way I can actually just... How did I not get my strong attack out? Come on, let's do that. Because that guy with the HP bar, he's kind of like a mini boss. Um, if let loose, he will basically be a real nuisance. But I wanted to do the heat attack there. I want to get him to do his free hit combo because his free hit combo, after I've done the strong attack against the governor so far, his free hit combo, the last hit, will actually connect with you and cancel you out of your own animation and allow you to just run down here. And in days gone past, we used to use that chandelier there to take care of every single enemy here. But what we're going to do instead is run down here, charge light, charge another light to hopefully get a couple of people here. The worry that we have in this area, and I'm going to equip my sword here in case I can get out of here quick enough, this guy. That guy likes to run up the stairs. There's my spare sword. That's beautiful, actually. That's really beautiful. For the purposes of obviously marathon safety, I want to take a couple of spare weapons. If I can, I'd like to take a spare gun, uh, because all guns, well, most of the pistols in this game, like the ones here, only have one bullet, and we only need one gun for the end of the run. But weapon-wise, I'm going to hopefully, I didn't mean to, unfortunately, not to start away. I'm going to hopefully have two spare weapons. I'm going to grab a crowbar in a later set piece. That's Jin Goda, the current head of Yomi, and this is his son, the main antagonist. <laughs> This is Ryuji Goda. I love this lad. He's awesome. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Nameless Katana that we just equipped and do very specific attacks. We're going to start with two strong lunges into a heat attack. Every single boss has a mid-fight QTE. After that mid-fight QTE, they will go into the heat phase where they'll get extra attack, extra defense. We want their HP bar to be as low as possible before that happens. Now, hopefully Ryuji behaves. Sometimes he doesn't. He's not. He's trying to knock me over. So we're just going to get behind him, attack him, and then that is going to be the end of this. So in the cutscene, we're going to meet a police detective named Karu Sayama. He's going to put Kiryu into protective custody whilst Ryuji runs off with his dad. Um, so we're going to be going into chapter four. Chapter four is a long chapter with a lot of housekeeping to do. So I think now would be a perfect time to throw it back to our wonderful host for some more donations. All right, I'm gonna keep going until you yell at me to shut up. Um, <laughs> Benny Burgers sends $50 and says, great job and good luck, Froob. I hope we can see that Majima saga. Uh, let's see, Majima, <laughs> Majima Goro himself sent $50. It says, we need that Majima side story because Kiryu-chan! <laughs> uh, keep going if you we, want. We have an anonymous $250 donation who says, gotta donate for my favorite character in my favorite series. Do it for Kiryu-chan! Uh, Dily Bones sends $20 and says, donating to this amazing event for the third year in a row. It ain't much, but every bit counts. Can't wait for the Yakuza Kiwami 2 run, because in the words of my favorite crime dad, Kiryu, that's rad. Which, okay. by the way, let's see where we're at for that. Majima Saga, we're at a little over 12,000 uh, out of 20,000. And for Half-Life Alex, we are uh, at $23,533.30 out of 90,000. So keep donating to both of those. Let's go. Yep, let's get those in. You saw me there just very, very briefly run into the uh, building there. That actually de aggroes the enemies because you can't get into a fight in that building. But something very weird happened. Uh, there was an enemy spawn outside of the bar that we had to run to that somehow despawned. I'm fairly certain that uh, Tap, a fellow K2 runner, will have noticed that. I have no idea what just despawned that. How bizarre. I, I was, because I, I was keeping an eye, because whenever you go around that corner, you have to keep an eye out for any enemy spawns. It's an area trigger, but it's fine. But. I just despawned a set of enemies. I don't even know how. You'll see on the mini map there's a lady there who has a purple uh, hitbox or a purple marker. If we walk into her, we'll get more dialogue, which will obviously slow this whole thing down. Kaoru has two dialogue boxes depending on how much HP she's got at the end of this. HP drain, I believe, is dependent on FPS, so me running at high FPS is not ideal. And also if we bump into NPCs. Again, standing NPCs, that's bad spawn. Don't turn around, thank you. Uh, bad NPC spawns can really hurt you here because if you hit into two NPCs, you actually lose enough HP to get the text dialogue. Um, but Kaoru basically got shot on the way back here. We went to this bar AOE. I don't know why I did that, I didn't mean to do that. I went to this bar AOE to see her mother um, and then we took her back there. We'll be getting into a few NPC escort missions later on. 
So we're in a timed, we're in a very yeah. timed, I think it's three minute section here, where we can't actually progress the plot until we get certain phone calls. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've got a big long shopping list, we're gonna go do some shopping. This is the route that has completely changed over the past couple of weeks. So I'm being very careful to actually go the correct route. I believe I have the two muscle soda that I need that I can just skip this by here. But for marathon safety, oh, sometimes sometimes these don't work. Uh, for marathon safety, I'm actually just going to be be safe and secure and actually get the muscle soda so that I know. Um, which does mean that I will probably do a safety muscle soda route in six, I think. But either way, we need to raise something like 325,000 yen. That platinum plate there is 200,000 yen. Coupled with the two gold plates that we now have, that's 400,000 yen. Beforehand, we used to go along the entire bottom route of Osaka there, uh, bottom route of Sotenbori, and we used to pick up like two silver plates, or one extra silver plate, including the two silver plates that we would have picked up back in chapter two. This right here, if I can get it for the phone call, perfect, is the key for another coin locker which contains the blood cake chain. Now, it doesn't sound very nice, but actually it's something that lowers... Oh, actually, I don't know if it lowers our defense in this game. Uh, but in Yakuza 6, it lowers our defense but raises our attack greatly. Here it raises our attack greatly. I'm not sure if the defense debuff happens here or not. Uh, we'll see when I equip it. I can't remember. Either way, we have to run to the right here. There was a substory on the left, which is actually the Kiryu voice actor substory. A very good substory. Uh, would have taken up a lot of time if we'd have hit it. This locker key is for a wooden sword. The wooden swords have uh, 48 attack. They have 16 durability if you take them off of an enemy, or 12 durability. But from that coin locker key, we can get one that has 36 durability, which will be one of the things that we use for the main run itself. Um, again, weapon route is a little tight currently, so I will be picking up spare weapons just in case. But that sword right there is one of the swords that you'll always pick up, because that sword will take us through the next big set piece and the next couple of fights. We're now waiting on the second phone call, which, if done correctly, we should be getting just as we walk into the place. The first phone call was from Daigo Dojima, uh, giving us an uh, update on the situation. The second phone call is going to be from Karu's mother, who needs some bandages, because she's helping to take out the bullet that's currently in Karu's shoulder. And as soon as we get here, there's our second phone call. And when you get the second phone call, that guy here, he actually enables you to buy bandages. And this is the key item that requires you to move the story along. So we're now going to head over to the bar AoE, which is the bar which is hosted by her mother. Uh, it's a small little place. One, <laughs> I guess I'll talk about it here. The Whenever anyone asks about Yaksa speedrunning, and they they ask about, like, what's the worst thing about running Yaksa speedruns? The taxi list. Because the taxi list changes every single game. And sometimes really awkwardly. The great thing about the Dragon Engine game is we have more taxi spots than we, we ever need, which is great. We pretty much in this game have a taxi spot for literally every single taxi point that we need, which is great. Um, in the original Yakuza 0, original, there's only one Yakuza 0. In Yakuza 0, um, the top taxi spot there wasn't taxi to Kamurocho, and it was actually taxi to East Sotenbori Street. So in Kiwami 2, the taxi list has swapped, has added an extra option, and has swapped around the first two that were in uh, Yaxa Zero. So that's the only unfortunate thing about like learning multiple Yaxas, is just remembering the entire taxi list to make sure that you don't taxi to the wrong place. Because if you taxi to the wrong place, you can accidentally taxi to a point where you don't have a taxi. And yeah, that can end runs because you've just literally lost like 30 seconds or something. So this here Junka, he is a Mahjong player. He is one of the memorable Mahjong masters of the city. He wants us to get a stuffed cat, which... No, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm speedrunning here. So we're just going to go over... He he will give us access to the Mahjong parlor where the information dealer that we're trying to access is. Important thing about vending machines. Despawns enemies. Absolutely beautiful. So in multiple of the Axe games, we have different ways of despawning enemies. Here it's taxis or vending machines. Vending machines are phenomenal. Which was why it was really upsetting that vending machines got removed from Judgment. But essentially, this fight, again, you know the drill. Gonna grab this sign over here, Muscle Soda, and hopefully everyone gets together for one hit. Beautiful. The guy on the right was almost moving a little too far away. Again, those are those situations where you kind of have to react if it happens. Here we're going to get everything that we collected the lock keys for. So the Spirit Tome, which is going to be for leveling up. 
Blood Cake Chainmail, and the Oakwood Katana. There's a slight delay when you leave uh, equipment like that before you can do this. So I'm going to equip my stuff. Blood Cake Chainmail. It does lower our defense a tiny bit uh, from the looks of things. And this is the reason why I said earlier that even though we're on easy, this is not an easy run. Because in this run, we will not be getting any HP or defense upgrades at all. It's not as bad as certain Yakuza runs, cough Yakuza 6, where actually we lower our defense by a flat 50, and we don't get any upgrades there either. Yakuza, Yakuza 6's run can literally have you dying in three hits to every boss from, like, the penultimate chapter onwards. That run is fantastic, and I love it. So we rescued Junker's little girl, who was actually a cat, and we've now gotten the Mahjong tile to get into the Mahjong tile. Fun fact, in the original Yakuza 2, you didn't have to do any of this. Because in the original Yakuza 2, all you had to do was speak to the guard outside of the door about 15 to 20 times, and he gets so fed up of you that he just lets you in. Unfortunately not here, we have to do it. And sometimes his hitbox just doesn't load in because I keep walking past him. Whoops. So we're here to see the information dealer. The information dealer is going to be this guy in the back here called Isaki. He wants us... We need to pay a base 100,000 yen for his info. We have to say it's your call. We pay the 100,000 yen. At which point he goes through and says the bullet belongs to uh, Herida, I believe. Not Herida. Herida's the other one. Um, one of the Omi guys working with uh, Ryuji Goda. And... He will tell us some more info if we pay him 300,000 yen. Now, this is the reason why we got all the money earlier. If you don't have the 300,000 yen, you have to do this little side quest where you have to go and speak to Kurokara again, go over to a bar called Stigil, go back to Kurokara, I believe, and then come here. So we save about three minutes by that. We're going to pick up this bin here. I'm going to use the wrong actual move. So I'm going to aim for Asaki because I want Asaki to go out of everybody in here. Every time there's a Yak and Speed Run that has a Mahjong, Hala, shame. Every Yakuza game that has a Mahjong pile, the battle, kind of a pain in the backside. What we used to do in the old, old days was we used to pick up one of the chairs in here, but because the ceiling is so low and because this is the Dragon Engine, what can accidentally happen is the chair can hit the ceiling and break in your hand, which is genuinely hilarious. It sounds like I'm complaining, and I really am not, because the Dragon Engine is wonderful. You haven't seen too many great ones just yet. Keep an eye on the ragdolls. The Dragon Engine allows us to get some amazing enemy ragdolls. So, yeah, I love this engine. It's very different to the old engine, and I actually quite like it. So even though we're in this fight, we can keep running because this is an area trigger. New to Kiwami 2 is the return of the Cabaret Club. This is an amazing minigame from Yakuza 0. I'm going to show you how to run the most successful Cabaret Club. First, you welcome your patron. You can see there's three minutes on this timer. Patron is going to sit down. He's going to ask for a very specific set, so either talk, party, love, or skill. And we're going to introduce him to said hostess. All right. Let's... Except, unfortunately, it's slow. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to sit here for two and a half minutes, and I'm going to throw it over to my wonderful host <laughs> for some donations. <laughs> All right. We have so many donations. There's a lot of people that want to see Majima. So. You have two and a half minutes. Go for it. All right. Uh, Jason sends $15. Can't wait to see the QME2 run. This money goes straight to getting Majima his own showcase. Uh, we have an anonymous $250 donation. Got to donate for my favorite character, my favorite series. Do it for Kiryu Chan. All right. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Chaos sends, yeah, it sends $25 and says, Yay for Yakuza, yay for MSF, yay for GDQ. Uh, let's see. A Mind Half Full sends $50. Says, I've been playing through the Yakuza games recently with my mom, and we love them so I decided to see Yakuza game in GDQ. So I'm so excited to see the Yakuza game in GDQ to watch it with her. Donated towards the Majima run because everyone loves Majima and we could always use some more. Uh, an anonymous $150 donation uh, gives us a haiku. It says, Majima Han, please, Makoto's been through enough. Give her that watch band. Uh, Iron Reaper sends $250 and says, Kiryu-chan! Uh, Obake sends $20 and says, Yakuza speedrun skipping cutscenes. Fills in the audience anyway by commentating whilst gameplay. Froob, you are a saint. Let this man show slash tell us Majima. If 
We got any more. We still oh. got a minute left. Oh boy, <laughs> uh, jukebox legends. It's fifteen dollars. Says Kiryu Chan. But no, seriously, very excited about the Yakuza run and really want that bonus run to make it in. Majima is such a fantastic character and more people really need to see him. Uh, let's see here. Steven H. Says, sends $25 and says, It's GDQ week once again. Thank you all for making working from home much more enjoyable. The Yakuza games are some of my favorite games ever, so I just had to chip in towards the Majima Saga incentive. Keep up the good job, everyone. Uh, Rocket Racer sends $25 that says, Majima Construction offers the following limerick. There once was a man from Dojima who would not take a fight with Majima. A reason to bow to Goro had to rout. Now let's unlock the Majima Saga. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. That's good. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much for your donations. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll get Majima Saga this, and hopefully we'll also get Half-Life Alex. Don't forget that is also coming up, and I want to see that met. Let's go and get Half-Life Alex as well. You also have the entirety of the Ocarina of Time randomizer coming up. So I love this mini game, and it actually pains me that we have to skip this. We actually, for one week, last week, we routed it back in until we found that gold plate in chapter two. So unfortunately, we routed it in for GDQ, and then we routed it out for GDQ. <laughs> so that's a massive shame. Um, but you saw there that we were supposed to lose money. You actually only lose money in um, X to Zero's cabaret weirdly enough. Uh, here you don't lose any money, so money's not an issue. So basically, at the end, uh, we discover that uh, Ryo Takashima and Sengoku have placed hits on us and Kaoru, and Daigo and Omi's uh, Jingoda have both been kidnapped. So we're heading back to Kamurocho, as you can see here. We're going to be heading over to Tojo HQ to keep everybody apprised of the situation. I ran a bit too far into that sign there. My DualShock has been... Uh, having some really nasty stick drift issues for a little while now. And fun fact, even though that phone call there looks like it's an area trigger, it's actually not. It's actually one that only happens if you're not in a fight. It's one of those one of those exceptions that always happens in... always happens in Yakuza runs. So, what we're going to do is going to speak to Yayoi here. She has a plan. Because if we want Daigo to be the head of the Tojo, many of the old guard are not going to accept some young guy just coming in and taking over when you know a lot of been a lot of them have been there for ages so basically we're going to go and get the approval of a certain ex tojo officer and who is that you might ask well we're gonna go in here we're gonna grab this purple bun we're gonna grab this technique tome and this dagger this demon fire dagger this very very familiar dagger belongs to said ex officer so we're now going to head out, and everything that we've picked up to this point is about to go towards our first big major level, level up session. So, we're going to head to Purgatory here. Purgatory is where Majima is currently hiding out. It used to belong to the Florist of Sai, but here's a mysterious assassin. So, we need to up our attack a little bit. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the Nameless Katana, which is hyper strong. Muscle Soda off, of course. Purple Bun, Spirit, and Technique Time. This gives us enough experience to be able to get Boost EXP Gain Level 1, Boost EXP Gain Level 2, Boost Weapon Attack Level 1, and then a whole bunch of attack on top of that. And as you will see now, we are doing an over 1 HP bars worth of damage. That's actually an insane amount of damage. Every Yakuza game... Enemies get a buff every couple of chapters. I'm not sure if it happens here, if it's the chapter after this one, but the first one happens around here. The next one happens in chapter 7, I believe, and then one ends up in, like, chapter 12, I think. Um, but essentially we'll be going through. We have a very... We have a very solid list of when we want to do our We're going to have to despawn this, unfortunately, because we need to talk to the shopkeeper, Don Quixote. Um... Don Quixote, unfortunately, I've got some bad news. I'm not buying those beats. I've, I've decided, I know you're watching, Tap. I'm not buying the beats, trust me. <laughs> we, we, we've routed in those beads, and I think we're routing out those beads again because they give us too much attack. <laughs> not touching those beads. But uh, unfortunately, I think that Don Quixote is no longer in the Yakuza games because of licensing issues. So, unfortunately, as you're probably aware, Yakuza has a lot of in-game product placements, a lot of real things. Like, a lot of the... You'll probably have noticed when I've been using the vending machines a couple of times. Boss Coffee, for instance. Um, fun fact, 
even though it's muscle soda in this game our main attack buff drink in yakuza 6 the game before this was actually cc lemon um and worked in different ways so it, fun funnily enough um this is a, a pupil of kamaki our old martial arts teacher we're not going to go and get extreme heat like the bosses have because that will literally cost us five ten minutes um but the fun thing is that the Ryugogotsuku devs are very, very good after each game of seeing what makes the games really, like, what's the really overpowered thing in those games. For example, in Yakuza 0, in its speedrun, there's a move in Beast's combo tree called Golden Fist, which literally, you can just level up that, and you can literally take that straight into any percent legend. Like, the strats that you're seeing here, you can do these and go straight into any percent, into any percent legend, don't recommend it because legend difficulty basically if you die in legend difficulty you go back to your last save uh and in the older yakuza games when we didn't have auto save is your last hard save which there used to be a situation in the finale of this game which has now been routed out thankfully that still terrifies me to this day and here he is here he is good old lad Majin Magara. You can see his saga if we can meet that incentive at the end of the run. Either way, it wouldn't be a Yakuza game if we didn't have a Colosseum section. So, in the original Yakuza 2, I'm fairly certain you couldn't use weapons here. So we're going to start off by using Names of Town against the Speeder. And then speaking of Yakuza Legends, here comes a character that's been in the Yakuza series since the very beginning, since the original Yakuza 1, Gary Buster Holmes. I love this guy. You can actually get his weapon in the game. They have unlimited durability and about 64 attack, whilst also having an added effect of stunning enemies. Unfortunately, in the run, we would have to go through multiple bouts of the Colosseum to unlock them, which is just slow. And of course, wouldn't be a Yakuza run without imagining this. So we have a very set pattern of how we're going to attack Magina here. We're going to get out the name of Katana, because we only have four hits on that. Two strong lunges. Wait, because you don't need to do the heat attack here, because watch this damage. If you're wondering how much damage we're currently outputting, watch this. Why did I actually do QTE, right? Yeah, that's no HP remaining. So Majima's in is extreme heat. We just have to hit him once. This is why we use light attacks here. It's a little upsetting that I had to hit him twice. That happens sometimes. It does mean that my name is Katana is gone. That's the weapon that I use coming up against the next boss up of this one, which means that I'm now running through my head which weapons I've still got, which weapons I picked up, what weapon I'm going to use against him. I'm probably just going to use the normal wooden sword because it should be a one shot against him. But this does also mean I need to do a tiny bit of extra menuing when I do my next menu to make sure that I equip a new weapon in that slot, which will probably be the replacement nameless katana that we picked up back in Toja HQ. So. We're going to go and speak to Majima, try and get his recommendation for Daigo being Tojo Chairman. And in the meantime, we're going to head into the old office of the florist. This used to be the florist place. Purgatory is an underground kind of pleasure area for the rich and the wealthy, which is a old, old abandoned uh, subway. You find out about it in Yakuza 1. And again, new to Yakuza Kiwami 2 is a brand new mini game. This is the, I said brand new, it's not, I lied. It's actually a mini game that was first shown off in Yakuza 6, which came before this. I know that's confusing. It is the Clan Crate. It has been changed off the Yakuza Kiwami 2. It is now more of a tower defense game. We have been routing this for a while. We got kind of lazy with it for a while. A good Clan Crate used to be a 116, but we've managed to make it sub 1, and I hope I can do that. We're going to send Majima here. We're going to put everybody else here. I'm going to do things very specifically in this, and it's going to take hopefully a minute, probably longer than a minute. So whilst we do this, uh, I'm going to send it over to my one of hosts again. If you've got any donations, that'd be a great time. All right. Well, C2 Yoshi sends a thousand dollars. Everyone clap for that. Uh, wow. It says, so I hear we're doing haikus now? Summer games done quick. Shut up and take my money for Half-Life Alex. Uh, let's see, Ivy not EV since twenty five dollars. This has got to donate for best crime dad Kiryu, and especially for Majima side story. Uh, let's see, Sir Zilot sends twenty five dollars. This is joining the donation train to get best boy Majima on screen and to get more of Froob's amazing commentary. Also, I really want to see a VR speedrun. I think we all want to see that. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh. uh 
Let's see here. Lizix sends $50, says, I love GDQ, and I'm hyped to hopefully see a Half-Life Alex speedrun later. Uh, Jason sends $15 and says, can't wait to see the QME2 run. This money goes straight to getting Majima his own showcase. Uh, Hypergyver sends $200. Says love this event and loving the free, uh, loving the online format. <laughs> yeah, free online format. <laughs> loving the online <laughs> format is allowing more international runners to be showcased. Donation to Yak Yakuza 2 Majima incentive because nothing is better than getting more Majima, right, Kiryu Chan? Uh, Shinny D sends a hundred dollars and says my fiance and I started binging the Yakuza games just a few weeks ago and we were thrilled to see one in a GDQ schedule. Money goes to the Majima Saga because I will always yearn for more Majima content. Uh, Pinball Wizrobe, which is a very good name. I enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> that is a good name. Since, since $15 and says, here with another donation for Yakuza Kiwami 2. While an inferior follow-up for not having the genius of the Majima Everywhere system, I'm still so happy that this series has started getting a following in the West, with Yakuza 0 becoming one of my favorite open world games ever. Can't wait to see what a speedrun of this wild game looks like. Thanks one, once again for all you do. Hey, thank you all for your generous donations, appreciate it. Um, if you saw me look a little cocky at the end of that, that's our very first confirmed sub 50 second magic, um, uh, clan creator. <laughs> I, I've i been saying for the last couple of days I felt like that was... I said, I've said for the last couple of days that sub 55 is free. That's sub 50. And I I know that there's a couple of the runners watching who know that I'm rather excited about getting that. <laughs> so, we're going to be heading to the Amano building. We've been told to go there for a phone call because, hey, guess what? Jin Goda and Daigo have been kidnapped. So we need to go and get some info. Now, at the start of this chapter that you don't see, uh, both Kamara and Date are staking out Stardust, and that's Yuya there, an old friend of ours from Yakuza 1. They basically tell Kazuki, the owner there, that there's going to be a whole bunch of the bars that get uh, shut down um, because of raids going on at night. This is a block, and Kazuki then bolts for the exit. So they've gone off in hot pursuit, whereas we're going to carry on with our, with our own investigation over here. So, if you remember, this is Marita, who we met previously in the last chapter. Also, fun fact, it's actually, even though you have tech skip in uh, the Dragon Engine, which is hold R1 and X like the other Yaxa games, it's quicker to mash. So, you'll see in like certain situations like that, I'll be mashing. Now, this is going to be a hard set of fights. I'm really hoping for some good luck here. We're going to try and take care of these three and then go to the next fight and do a bit of shopping before this buff runs out. So... Want to aim for the big lad because he's got the most HP. Good, good start. These are the 16 bit. Their building has been taken over, the Amano building, which we're trying to get into, by a mysterious foreign organization. I took my time there because I accidentally taxied to the wrong place in, ta in uh, practice. And if you taxi to the one below it, you lose like 30 to 45 seconds. That's that's where I've lost runs before. So I'm going to grab some photo. I should grab some Poseidon packs. I'm doing old Poseidon pass strats, so just for safety. And here is the owner of the building. He oh. has the only key. Oh. Here's his brother. Now, we used to take them out with the gas cylinder that's to the right, but hopefully they can walk together because I'm going to be using the sword. That's a shame I didn't hit both of them. So if you can take care of these in quick enough time, that's a shame. Oh, we did. Nice. So we're taking them out quick enough. You actually stop the spawning of any other enemies in this whole bit. And as you can see, we have plenty of muscle soda left. So that's actually a good sign. Half the time you'll see, like, sometimes, like, in the chapter 3 beginning set piece. I'm surprised half my spawn didn't see me. Oh. <laughs> like, in the beginning, like, chapter 3 set piece, you'll see us, for example, like, keep on our muscle soda, because that's how we can tell how well these set pieces are going, depending on how much of our attack got we've got left. Now, we have the key to get into the building. We're going to be going to the top, where we have been told to meet up at a certain time. Kaoru's going to guard the exit, and we're going to get into our next big set piece, the Amano building. And you're going to meet a wonderful gentleman here. <laughs> We're going to run forward. So this is where the start of our new weapon wrap begins as well, actually. So, we're going to get out our wooden sword, muscle soda. This guy is called the Man in Black. So we're going to kick him for a back, eh? Don't worry, you'll see him again soon. 
We're going to go over here, break this, because it's one hit with that sword. If you remember earlier, this is one of the barricades I was saying. We're going to take this sword. The sword has 60 damage and 24 durability. It's one of the best attacking uh, weapons we can get. I'm going to run here and just use my light attack, because you can actually use either light or, light or strong kicks. I would like that gun. I'm glad it went this way, because I actually need this gun for quick strats. This is the first point of the run where I could genuinely die. Because this is where we do something a little stupid. Plus marathon safety, I'm taking this healing item. Ow, what the hell is that? Okay, so, guy with a machine gun, we're just gonna, you know, dodge bullets. Hit him, and kick. That machine gun guy can kill you. I, I'm not joking, that machine gun guy can literally just demolish you. I might have run the second floor. The man in black just drop kicked for it. Pretty impressive. So we're going to equip our wooden sword, not soda, and a reminder that we're on the second floor. There he goes. <laughs> so we're going to carry on. We're going to put our sword away because we want to keep these sword uses for later. We're going to grab this pipe instead. It's a little slower than the sword, but we do need the sword for hits later on. Now, as you can see, Kira's hitbox with the sword, get, with the pipe, gets a little bigger. Now, this is one of the points where I was saying earlier about how the run can kind of go a little random. Please don't hit the stove over there. I, that is very low. That should have hit the stove. So we're going to grab this stove. The stove we need for the next three enemies and the boss of this area. So we're going to go up here. Fresh of soda because it just ran out. That's everybody on fire. And with these guys, it takes out one hit. That's how strong it is. With Curious Hitbox, you have to take this door from this side. Otherwise, it breaks the stove in his hand. And here he is. Two hand in black. So we're going to hit him with this stove and hopefully he gets set on fire because sometimes he hasn't from the recent which is frustrating. So there's a little bit of a delay. I'm glad he didn't attack. With that, we throw the stove and we grab this gas cylinder because guess what? Nice. So his attack patterns now change into part blunt, part stab. Now, that's actually very important because stabbing attacks, unless you have a weapon, very good, very, very good. This is a good set piece. If you don't have a weapon in your hands and you get attacked with a blade, you will actually, they will actually break through your guard. And it's the same for you. So we have a tier list in the Axa series most of the time of the enemies that you want to take out and their priority. Tier one, the one you want to take out first, enemies with guns, because you know, enemies with guns. Then you have the likes of enemies with knives. They're in tier two alongside enemies that have stun weapons, so stun batons, Stun guns, stuff like that. Then you have tier 3, which is pretty much everything else, but is also kind of split up into, like, individual tiers, where you'll have, like, the larger enemies. And this is more of an old engine thing, but the larger enemies have a mass amount of hyper armor, and they also have um, these drop kick attacks that are really frustrating to deal with. So they're kind of like the higher tier, alongside enemies with basically every other weapon, like baseball bats. Baseball bats themselves aren't inherently that dangerous, but they can basically knock you out of all of your combos. And rule of thumb, for most Yakuza runs, two-handed weapons are the absolute thing you want to use because stuff like bikes, as you saw already with bike straps, insane amount of damage. Exception to that is baseball bats. Baseball bats, despite being kind of a two-handed weapon, all of their damage comes from the last hit of the actual combo itself. And that's the entire reason as well why Slugger is a bad style in Yatsu. Well. I upset a lot of people when I say that, but trust me. So in this part, you can see on the right, there's a policeman there. There are three that spawn in this area. You have to avoid all of them. Usually their spawns are, their spawns are all random. Usually you don't get any that are a problem. The only two that can be problematic is if there's anyone here at this point, because I keep walking into that for some reason, but also when you walk out of uh, the underground area there, because you can't see them coming. So, essentially, we're just going to be running along here with Date. We've got Katsuki and Kaura. Both of them got shot. What happened at the end of the last set piece is there were two Katsukis, and one of them was a Katsuki planted by this organization that we're going to learn is called the Jinwon Mafia. You'll have heard me say the name Jinwon earlier. So, we carry Katsuki and Kaura here to Dokimoto's, another old friend of ours. We're going to say to Date. Date's our old detective friend. Love the guy. He's also another Yakuza legend from the original Yakuza. We're going to say to go over to Phantom, which is an old bar that used to be called Bacchus in Yakuza uh, 1. But incident happened in Yakuza 1. Now, if he catches up, I'm going to show off a glaring truth about Date in the... Date? 
actually ours. <laughs> I don't know why, but underneath Date's jacket, for some reason, he just doesn't have a model. I think it's because of the high FPS of the PC version, making his jacket rise a bit higher, which Dragon Engine shenanigans, and they are brilliant. I love this engine. I genuinely do. It is great. Karu's going to realize we kind of left her behind, so she's gone to Dokimoto's. We're going to go pick her up, um, and we're going to meet two mysterious individuals from the General Mafia. And whilst I run over there and time them out and send them to the bench, I'm going to send it back over to our wonderful host for some more donations. Okie dokie, let's see what we have here. Zaki sends $50 and says, I'm playing more Final Fantasy XIV and crafting while doing some work from home, and what better than some SGDQ to keep me company? Giving this money to Majima-chan, because my brother has been playing nothing but Yakuza recently. Let's get Majima and Half-Life Alex onto the schedule. And let's see. Uh, Handsome Princess sends $500 says, my partner and I have been marathoning the Yakuza series since quarantine started. Shoutouts to Seb for getting us into this mess. Figure dropping half a grand on Majima might be romantic enough to make a GDQ commentator do a marriage proposal for me. So for good measure, Shelby, thanks for being the Majima to my Kiryu. Or something like that. Will you be my eternal rival? Love, Andy. Yo, yo, that's awesome. Yeah, that's nice. So, we're gonna run with. That's a bad fight to fly. Um, we're just gonna run back to the bar. We're gonna meet up with Kara, and then a couple of the old residents of Kamarocho are being put up to kind of attack Kiryu. Um, I'd like to say as well, like a lot of people say this, I say this as well a lot. Uh, a lot of the donations tonight have said it as well. The series has had like an amazing resurgence in the West. Um, Literally, I've been with the series since the original on uh, PS2. And it doesn't matter if you're getting into the series now. It doesn't matter if you're getting into the series like oh, ages ago. It's so nice to see like the Yasu community just grow and grow. Um, I don't like the way that literally everybody is moving here. So it's time to, you know what, I'm doing this. Yeah, that'll, that'll finish everyone but the bartender, I believe. And okay. Here. Why you store a light charge, Justin? <laughs> stuck in the wall that man was stuck in the wall just don't worry about him he's fine but yeah this is um like it doesn't matter if you get into the series now it doesn't matter if you get into the series like ages ago we just love people getting into the yakuza series um and it's it's so easy to get into the yakuza series now one of the one of the big downsides to the actual speedrunning of the yakuza games is i can't show you half the half the amazing content that is in these games like over there to the right is a place called club sega Inside that Club Sega is a Virtual On, the entirety of Virtual Fighter 2 with online play, UFO catches, for example, the amazing karaoke that so many people know about, stuff like Puyo Puyo. Like, these games have so much amazing content. And even then, like, the storylines themselves are absolutely amazing. And it's never been easier to get into the series with, like, the likes of Zero and Kiwami. Uh, I always miss everyone in this fight. I hate this fight. It's never been easier to get into the series with Zero and Kiwami available on literally everything. Like, apart from Switch. Hopefully one day. So, and you can start with Zero or Kiwami, you can interchange them. Like, it's so good. Like, it's just, we just want more people to experience the Yakuza games. That's all we care about. So, I want to shout out, like, a very big special shout out to, obviously, GDQ for allowing me to run this here. Um, it's a massive honor for us in the Yakuza community to actually be able to put on a speedrun like this. So... Thank you all very much. I'm going to take my phone power now for me to run. Oh. At this point in the new route, in the new stamina route at this point, I would have stamina upgrades that meant I would not have to do any of these Poseidon powers, which is why this route, it's an amalgamation of the old route and the new route, and it's why this route is quite bad, because literally the new route, which is by... Oops, sorry. Uh, the new route, which has been cooked up by two runners, Jose Kuro and uh, don't skip that it's a single text box. That's old habits. Um, two runners who go by the name of Jose Kuro and Tapioca, uh, with some help as well from myself and Foxy. Uh, we've been doing this route for like the last couple of days, uh, in the last couple of weeks actually, just changing up completely. And I want to shout out, because they're going to yell at me if I forget to do this again. We actually have, for, for like a year or two, and I'm not joking about this, we kept saying between like the three of us, myself, Lily Graham, another Yakuza runner, and Tap, we kept saying between the three of us, 
You know, we should probably make a Discord at some point to, you know, for the actual Yakuza speedruns. We finally did that this year. <laughs> um, you can find the link on, like, pretty much any of the leaderboards, blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Um, I... Okay, so all the enemies in this part spawn in away from the camera, which is why that was an interesting route to take. This guy likes to guard a lot. I forgot to level up. Aha. That's why I'm not doing the damage. I can do it here. This is Hayashi. If you've ever played Yakuza 1, you recognize he's now working for Ryuji Goda. What we're going to do is I'm going to forget that I actually didn't equip my saw. So I'm going to go in and equip that, equip my muscle soda, and forget to do my level up. Yeah. Where are you? Boost one attack level two. Boost the limit of our attack and then really raise our attack again. I did that differently than how I wanted to, but you have a very small frame to get that heat attack off. So I got a little lucky. Watch Hayashi's HP up. Yep. Exceptionally strong at this point. So Hayashi's going to go into his second phase. Now, this is one of the more annoying bosses in their second heat phase in the entire game. I, that's impressive, honestly. Like, th those must be pretty hard. I'm genuinely scared. So Hayashi, actually, I'm going to do a charge right here because Hayashi's probably going to start with a combo and knock me out of my combo. So, yeah, there we go. That happens. Usually with bosses after QT, you have to hit them once to get them into their field of mode. Now, for this QT, we're going to purposefully not do anything. You can keep this good QT going for a long time despite whatever HP he's at. But we're just going to stop it because this actually makes it a lot quicker. Ouch. Will we get a funny Hayashi ragdoll? No. Oh. Sometimes, because of the bounce in the cutscene, he bounces outside of the cutscene as well. It's actually wonderful. Um, so this is going to be our next big shopping trip. So we're going to use Planet Power. Again, if I was on the new stamina route, wouldn't have to use it here. The new route is the reason... I'm going to call myself out here, because I've been saying for years that I need to write up the notes for Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kurami 2. The new route is the entire reason why I've been lazy and haven't done that for Kurami 2. Oh, fun fact, I get to show it off here. So, if you're in a fight like this, and you walk into this trigger here, don't do that if you're on PS4. That actually causes the game to crash. Not all the time, but I actually can make it so that the game can crash by doing that. If you're on PC, you're fine. Just as a heads up, just don't do that. <laughs> it's weird the things that you find when you speedrun these things. It's really weird. Because that's like one of the only places that can happen. What if my attacks are not hit? Interesting. I'd like that knife that he has to stay around. Unfortunately, it did not. So instead, we're going to have to use this pipe. It's a little slower. The attack animation, as you can see, is a little slower. It doesn't matter because this guy should go down one hit. I can see attack upgrades that we did. By doing this animation, we can get the pipe into this room. Hopefully take out everybody. Hopefully hit him before my buff goes off. That just ran out. I'm gonna have to dodge. Yep. Hit everybody with this, which is unfortunate because this means I don't have anything for this guy. What we usually do is grab this crowbar. Hit that guy, and he falls in the back. He actually still played quite nice. That's quite nice. So I'm going to, for marathon safety, grab a fresh crowbar in here. The crowbar has, as you can see, just took out that guy completely. The crowbar is ridiculously strong, but but it unfortunately has a very short attack rate. We're going to go into this room here, take care of these guys here. Spin around, take care of this guy here, take care of this guy here. Break this. There. Wait, who's alive? You're alive. Hey. <laughs> Get rid of this barricade. Start taking out enemies in this room. He drops a Chinese Saber that has a little less attack. The Chinese Saber is actually one of the strongest weapons we can get in the game. In the old weapon, we used to pick up the a lawful key from the Chinese Saber, but we've actually, again, rerouted that completely. Ooh, thank you for not breaking that, because that's a very important weapon. Round here. Don't need that anymore. Bye-bye. Uh, for safety, as I said earlier, I'm going to grab this spare crowbar, and then we're going to grab this sword. We're not going to put it away yet, because we're going to break this barricade with one hit. Put it away then. And now we have that. When you're carrying a weapon that you haven't put in your inventory like that, if an enemy knocks you down, the weapon will fall to the ground and it will potentially break. So that's why you'll see us actually like putting our weapons away at certain points, so that we make sure those weapons don't break. You see there that there is a crowbar next to me. 
I think you know exactly what we're going to go here for here. We're going to go for that. Nozzle Soda it up. Start to spin. Now, as I found out the other day, don't walk past these two to go after the gun guy. Because as you can see here, they go very aggressive and try and hit you. And can almost chain stun you and kill you. Now for one of the most annoying sub-bosses in the entire game, surprisingly. But this guy. If given a second, he will start to throw that pipe around and he will get us into a combo that we won't be able to... You know what? I don't really need that crowbar, but... Oh wait, this one's going to get overridden by the load screen. You know what? I'm keeping that one as well. <laughs> we, here's the thing, though. We don't want to take too many weapons. because If we take too many weapons, we're going to clog off our inventory for later on. But that's a good weapon. So I'm going to pop on a muscle soda at this point and hopefully take care of most people. Good dodge. Very nice. Very smooth. And you can see on the bed, we found Daigo. So we're going to head into the next chapter, and I think this would be a very good time to throw it over for some donation. All right. Well, Majimako Real <laughs> donates $50 and says, Froob is our 24-hour Cinderella for this amazing run. It's so wonderful to see Yakuza at GDQ. Let's get the Majima story incentive to get a glimpse of Makoto. Uh, Rishiru donates $20 and says, Kiwami means extreme. I'm beyond excited to see Yakuza's at GDQ. So good to see these crime dads. Hearts. Going to the Majima incentive because I know a lot of people would love to see that. Donation backed by Sky Finance. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Majima Han sends a hundred dollars and simply says, Kuryo chan uh, by the way, as an update to that, let's see, we have ooh, we have fifteen thousand seven hundred and forty-nine dollars and forty-four cents out of twenty thousand. So if you get if you get that money in, we might just see Majima saga, so let's go. That would be awesome. Just to remind everybody, there are fifteen chapters in this game. By the way, there's Terador again. We're at his funeral. Um, there's 15 chapters in the game. Uh, the end game is quite fast, so we're we're getting there. I I don't have obviously splits open. I can't see the time obviously, so I don't know how well this pace is going. It feels like actually for a marathon, this actually is pretty decent pace. Not gonna lie. Speak of annoying enemies, this guy right here with the sword. Here's the Goryu clan, Ryuji's lot. But actually, that was sent by Ryuji. There's that delay. I'm having my rich tea that I accidentally bought earlier. This guy is annoying because he has. A That's why. <laughs> that that would be why. Um, if you don't start off by lunging at him and having like good positioning where he is, he'll just start to dodge around like that and then guard a lot. So again, just making sure that you're aware. Enemies kind of behavior. He's a very aggressive enemy, even on easy. If you're on higher difficulties, he usually starts the fight by just trying to attack you. I should have enough muscle soda for the next boss, but I'm not going to risk it. So I'm just going to, because obviously we're in a marathon, I'm just going to get some spare here. Um... Essentially, Sengoku has sent along some of his troops to kind of, like, mess around with Kamurocho, uh, mess up the Tojo, and one man managed to stop them all on his own, and that man would, of course, be Majima Goro. So, Kamuro's gonna stay here with Majima whilst we go to Tojo HQ, because of all the times, of all the times for there to be a coup in the Tojo clan, now would be the time, huh? So... An old character who goes by the name of Jindo is wanting to take over the Tojo. He has taken over the old Nishikiyama family and has also absorbed some of the old Shimano family. So we he's got quite a following behind him. That's a fight spawn there going my way, so I have to get rid of it. Let's keep it in like a little might go at 10 kg there. Now, fun fact. You can soft lock this game. And the soft lock is actually coming up right here. So you're going to see that the enemy's HP bars are going to appear a little early, and we're going to take our Muscle Soda early. What we're going to do is we're going to very, 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 be very, very patient here, not take out all the enemies until the title card disappears. Because if you take out all the enemies before the title card disappears, the next barricade, thanks for the special, uh, the barricade that appears here doesn't get an actual hitbox. So you can't continue, you just have to load your autosave, which thankfully is just outside, but just one of those little things. This fight is annoying because of that enemy, and also the large lad who's walking towards us. I really would like to take care of these guys before Nelson Soda runs out. That's a shame. And you can see there, 
the sword broke when we fell down. I'm not gonna waste my attack, another another soda on him, uh, even though that's a bit slow not to. Ideally, I would have kept the sword for here because obviously, again, barricades go down in one hit. Down on X, keeping that for marathon safety. Now, you're gonna see me take a citrus cider. You might be wondering why I'm taking the medium attack drink rather than the large attack drink. And that's because of Shindo himself. Shindo here. Very annoying boss. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a specific amount of damage to him in his first phase so that he doesn't go to his second phase. Hence why we take the medium attack off. Do not... I didn't want to do that. That's unfortunate. We want to make sure we hit him once. Ah, that's unfortunate. Because of the throw, I accidentally did too much damage. So the reason why we wanted to do that was so that we could skip this phase. Because every phase of Shindo starts off with him walking towards you. And because of that, he stores up a dodge. That's actually decent. That's actually decent. I'm going to use the saw here because I actually messed up my actual um, mouse. I got flustered because I went into my menu to use muscle soda, and that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to muscle soda after you do that. So if you hit him with the chair properly, what happens is he skips this phase entirely and just goes straight outside. I got my saw out. I'm not putting it away. I refuse. This last phase of Shindo is kind of annoying because, again, he starts off with that dodge. What I'm probably going to do is just try light attacks. We haven't... This is probably one of the things that we haven't got anything, like, actually strap-wise for in this fight. But that's pretty quick. Um, you do lose an extra hit on the weapon. But if you do the strong lunge, Shindo will usually just start to attack you instead. And then, obviously, he'll stun off you. And you lose more time. So, this is one of the bits where we haven't exactly figured out, like, something truly optimal. But that's pretty much as good as and now you get to see some really cool cinematography. Again, the RGD devs are masters of stuff. There's that. If you're a little squeamish, you might want to look away. Yep, that's the end of Shindo, alright? So with that, we're going to... I've got sprint level 2, so I don't need to take a Poseidon power. So now I can just run straight back to conference room. If you do not do any sprint upgrades before this, you have to take a Poseidon power. Um, otherwise, you will run out of stamina before you get to top stairs. I don't think I've ever mentioned. I haven't shown it off, obviously. But if you ever run out of stamina, you kind of stagger for a couple of seconds. And that will lose you like a good four to five seconds. Now, just ignore the fact that I'm taking a muscle soda right here. Just ignore that fact. Because, oh, hey... Shindo's not dead. So we're going to grab the sofa, hit Shindo, that's the end of Shindo. One more field of heat. And there we go. This is a quick field of heat, actually. Quite nice. And then after this, Daigo actually does something, and uh, that is the end of Shindo. So basically, Ryuji has come to warn us, and he has told us that we have three days until they properly march on Kamarojo. And yeah, Shindo now has been dealt with, the coup has been dealt with. We find out, we, well, Kaoru finds out, she believes that she might be one of the survivors of the Jin Ma Massacre. So we are currently, while she goes off to do some, she's going to go off to do some investigation, we're going to go off to tie up some loose ends from Yakuza 1. I see that fight spawn, but it's moving the correct way, that's good. Um, we're gonna just go and do a little bit of side story stuff, which is actually main story. We're gonna taxi to Theatre Avenue if we don't move, because if you, you can move like while you're in the load screen, but there's a sub story right there on the left. As long as we don't move, we won't accidentally hit that, and instead we'll just load up the next story. This is Takashi the Florist's son. The Florist never really stuck around for Takashi's youth, so Takashi is finally... he's... After his character arc in Yakuza 1, he's getting some cold feet, and he wants to know about his dad. Obviously, we know about his dad, so we're going to go and find out about him. I'm going to do a spare muscle soda buy here just for safety when I come back. But we're going to go see the florist. That's a bad fight. Spin. I guess I'll do it here, then. <laughs> like, oh, guess, guess I'll do it here. We don't need Poseidon Power anymore. Um... We don't usually need to get that muscle soda, but I'm only doing it for marathon safety because the the muscle soda route that I use is quite tight. If the new stamina the new stamina route causes us to change up the times that we buy our drinks completely. So essentially we don't have to get muscle soda at certain points. I believe we do here in the stamina one, 
But we're at like no muscle soda at this point anyway. So it just needs a run out. But we're gonna now run back to uh the bar, uh which I believe is Earth Angel or Shellac, one of the two. Um The florist will go see his son. And in the meantime, I'm gonna throw it again, once again over to our wonderful host for some more donations. All right, well, Handsome Princess is back with a $5 donation. It says, marriage proposal update. She said, eh, sure. Nice. <laughs> Play Yakuza. It gets you girls. <laughs> That's a good soccer right there. I like that. Um, Haster sends $10 and says, I know the bare minimum about Yakuza and haven't seen anyone play it or played it myself, but Froob is a delight, and I had to donate for the Majima story. <laughs> Uh, one of the Johns from Sega donates $100 and says, Hey, Froob, so thrilled to see Yakuza represented at GDQ. You're absolutely killing it in this run. Unlike Kuryu, because Kuryu doesn't kill. Uh, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Good luck with the rest of the run. Putting my donation towards the Majima saga. Let's get Majima everywhere. And let's see, what is the update on that? Oh, we have less than $4,000 to go. You want to see that? Ooh, we can meet that. Let's keep those coming in. Thank you all very much for the generous donations. Yeah, again, I would like to I'd like to actually give a special shout out to Sega because again, like Sega kept faith in this series, like after after a couple of tumultuous years for them, and like everything that's happened, like I I want to say that like one of the big things and one of the reasons why everybody loves this series is how amazing the localization and like of this entire series has been since like the older days. Like I, I said it when the Yakuza 3 remaster came out. The Yakuza 3 remaster's relocalization was so good that it actually bumped Yakuza 3 up a couple of places on my favorite Yakuza list. So, literally, I want to, like, shout outs to Sega because they, their faith in this series has kept it going in the West and it's been absolutely phenomenal to see. So, we've come back to Certain Boy. Saima obviously has found out about, obviously, potentially being one of the surviving members of the Jingwon. We're going to head off to Stigil, because that's where her mother says she's gone to unwind a little bit. So, we're, we're coming out to the end of this chapter. Um, there's a little bit more. We're going to meet a NPC in a little bit. I'm just going to see what's there. That's that Yakuza Zero taxi list getting into my head again. <laughs> They're very different games and very different runs. Um, the Every single Yakuza speedrun is actually very different, and it's fascinating. Whereas, obviously, Yakuza Kremi 2, as you can see, is a much more weapon-based and item management-based route, the likes of Yakuza 0, for example, is more of a traditional brawler. Yakuza Kiwami has a very interesting run in the Yakuza Kiwami's any percent makes use of one of the only glitches in the series in every single fight in the... Beast has a move called Max Crush. I saw an enemy spawn on the bridge. I have to take care of it. Um, Beast has a move called Max Crush, which when you charge an attack, your next heat attack, right, if you don't do another attack, does an insane amount of damage. Pretty bizarre. Um, and then you've got the likes of, obviously, this, which is weapon-based. Yakuza 3, which is half brawler, half by 13 illegal guns, and then just shoot everything. Yakuza 4, which is pray your run doesn't end three hours into gambling. That's, uh, that's a thing. Yakuza 5, which is just, hey, run around for a while. Uh, Yakuza 6, which is just, hey, drop your defense by 50 and pray you don't die in the end game. Um, and we don't know that like a dragon yet. So that's going to be good fun, because that's a turn-based JRPG now. So that's that's going to be massively different. Um, but speaking of uh, Yakuza Kiwami runs, I'd like to shout out. I'd like to shout out Vlech currently. He's, uh, I believe, currently we are doing the uh, commentary for the German restream. He's one of our runners of Yakuza Kiwami, so shout out to him. Uh, we've had a couple of folks as well um, get in contact from the restream, so I'd like to say as well a big thank you to all of them for doing the amazing job that they've been doing. And of course, thank you to the GDQ staff who have been doing a wonderful job over this entire week. Um, so here is the tattoo artist. He is the Osaka tattoo artist. He's different to the tattoo artist who did our tattoo back in Kamarochu, who was Otobori, I believe. Um, there's a big thing going on. Kazuhori here is supposed to... She's conflicted about taking over the... She's conflicted about taking over the tattoo artist's business because the tattoo that she's currently doing, the one that you saw very briefly there, got stolen by Satoshi here. And that tattoo is very special because the person who is supposed to inherit that tattoo is one Ryuji Goda. So she's a little conflicted. I'm going to try... 
This is the best time to try new strats in a marathon, right? I'm gonna try new strats. So, I hate this fight. I'm gonna go over here, grab, not that trash can, but I'm probably gonna grab it. I was gonna try and grab the drinks cooler. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Again, this is one of those rooms where if we grab the chair, the chair's, the chair's attack pattern is really bad because you think with a chair, Kiryu would just like grab it and swing it, right? Instead, certain weapons, like those chairs there in the bar stools, Kiryu actually raises it above his head. And because the ceiling here is a little too low, sometimes it can break. So for safety, we usually just use a different weapon. What I should have done is just use the wooden sword, because again, I've picked up so many spare weapons in this run that I've got more than I know how to deal with. Now, this fight isn't too bad, because again, this is an area trigger here. Kaoru is upset about potentially learning that she is obviously still a member of the Jingwon survivors. We're going to head to find this guy just here. We're going to go to South Shofukucho, not Southwest Shofukucho Froob. Don't taxi to the wrong place like you've been doing for the past couple of days. Thank you very much. Because if I if I go to the other corner, there isn't a taxi over there and I gotta walk the distance. So here's the where the rest of our money for the run comes from. 30,000 yen for him. And now that 94,000 yen is for the rest of the run. We're going to head over to West Show for Kucho. Now, in the original Yakuza 2, we actually went to a different area here to go to the Shogi Parlor, for where this informant is hiding out. In Kwami 2, they've hidden it in Sunbury's back. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to here. Now, we need a code for this door, which is 110, 100, 109. I almost forgot this for a second, eh? As soon as we go inside, there's another cool little puzzle in here that we have to solve, which gives us the safe code here, which is 5824. That was the thing that I was most terrified about with this run, because I have a tendency to just randomly forget that code every so often. <laughs> oh, not skippable, right? Not skippable. Um, essentially, the code that you get the first time, you're supposed to find it... Do you remember that building I walked into back in Chapter 4 to de-aggro the enemies? That's where you're supposed to find the code out. Because this is a marathon for safety, I'm going to despawn them. But essentially, we get this shareholder ticket that we're supposed to take to Komian here. When we take it to Komian, the wonderful employee here gives us a piece of the shogi board. This is a very rude man. Um, he wants that shogi piece from us so that he can get into the shogi place. Instead, we're just going to do the usual. Amazing fight track, by the way. It only occurs here and I believe one sub story. Might be wrong on that. Again, there's some wonderful sub-stories in this game that I can't show off, including an infamous one called Be My Baby that everybody knows about. But we're going to go and find Santa Claus, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Santa Claus. I, I promise you that is Santa Claus. And in here we're going to find the surviving member of the Jingwon Massacre. He's actually, when he recounts the tale, we're actually going to remember that Kiryu himself was there that night as a young lad himself. Now, Sim here is the most annoying of all these enemies. It's a shame I unfortunately missed a double hit there somewhere. I had that suspicion coming in where I only had a couple of hits left that I might accidentally miss. The important one to take care of there is Sim. Um, I, I think he's actually named that way intentionally because that's the name of the group who do the main theme of this game, uh, which the main theme of this game comes up in a cutscene here, which we have to skip because uh, otherwise it mutes the VOD. I'm, I'm not muting this VOD. <laughs> That's, that's not on me. But we get a couple more, like, we get a couple of cutscenes with Curious Perspective where he thought that Kazuma was in danger when Kazuma was actually telling people to leave. And unfortunately, that caused Kazuma to have to shoot someone in self-defense to stop them from uh, from hurting Kiryu. And that person just so happens to be Kaoru's father. So, uh, Kaoru has gone off. Um, he's obviously a little upset about the whole situation. You can notice that we've got a little bit of jam on our suit. Uh, somebody accidentally stabbed us. Not accidentally. So, Kiwami 2, or the Dragon Ninja, I should say, has two default states of movement. The normal movement state, and then the drunk movement state. So if I was to get drunk in any of uh, the Dragon Ninja games, we start staggering around like this. I know I said my stick drift earlier was pretty bad. It's not this bad. So basically, we just stagger around a bit. You have to watch out for these telegraph poles here because they can actually teleport you backwards. It's a hilarious little glitch that just randomly happens. Um, but essentially, we're going to go back to the bar. Again, all these walking NPCs are randomly generated. This is the only time the game heals us. But we don't want to walk into NPCs because that's draining our HP. And we've had some very bad NPC spawns here, unfortunately. 
This is why I bought some, uh, some spare hearing items just in case. But we're going to go into AoE again, and after we get treated, we're going to find out that our adopted ha daughter Haraka has been kidnapped for about the fifth time in two games. So, it's a little quicker loadless, I think, to go and taxi the other way, but I'm going to give you all a cameo of a wonderful character from Yakuza 0, <laughs> the Obertarian. Oh, uh, the wonderful libertarian. So she has her own sub story in this, and yes, she is a cabaret member in this. Please go down to one hit. Good. That means I've got good attack for this part. That's good. Um, so we're going to run around certain Bori, go and speak to a couple of people, tying up some loose ends, uh, looking for Haraka. And in the meantime, I'm going to throw over once again to our wonderful host for some donations. All right, Sirig Z sends $100 and says, Hey folks, the Yakuza's community has shown me so much love. It's only right that I give back and put it towards the most worthy of causes. Like Majima Construction, let's renovate tomorrow and build a brighter future. We also have $200 from Alex Reese. Says, I want to see Majima. I want to see Alex. I want to see more games. Let's get these incentives met. Uh, Albert sends $250. Says, getting some work done while watching this wonderful game. Another $250 to Majima. Uh, let's see. We have uh, $50 from Hawk. He says, great work, Froobs, on the run. Great to see Yakuza getting some love, and you are doing such a fantastic job explaining, and this commentary is some of my ideal GDQ performing ever. Uh, Sieglin sends $50 and says, started back with Yakuza 0 when it came out and been loving it since. Let's see Froob play that Majima Saga. Can't ever have enough of him. Uh... Yeah, and the Neon Caster sends $15. Says it's time to be as Kuryu taught us. Be spicy and help. Put this towards everyone's favorite breakdancing madman, Majima, in Yakuza 2. Oh, fantastic. Can I just say I'm loving all of the little references in these donations as well. These are absolutely fantastic. So, it's a little quicker not to send Kurokawa into the drink, but I just like sending Kurokawa into the river, because there he is completely dry, don't worry about it. Well, I don't know why I took the Poseidon power here, because again, I have sprint level 2. Again, new sprint route, I, I get confused with the old route sometimes, because I've been doing the old route for like a year and a half, something like that. Um, so, old habits, you know how it is. I'm going to move this way instead of cutting in a little bit, because that way the enemy AI that aggroed onto me there goes all the way around rather than goes straight for me and it initiates the fight. That way I can get to the taxi and use it instantly. And we're going to go back here because the man who knows where Haraka is, you'll recognize this guy from earlier, it's Asaki. And uh, you know what's going to happen now. I'm actually going to, when I go and use my soda here, I'm going to go and equip one of my crowbars. This should hopefully be three hits and completely waste this sword. Ah, that's absolutely beautiful. So, we're now going to be going to one of the most weird, bizarre, and absolutely wonderful set pieces that you'll ever see. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the cuts, because that would lose us quite a bit of time. But I need you to suspend your suspend your disbelief for a second. Haraka's being held in Osaka Castle. So we're going to go, ta go taxi to Osaka Castle. Osaka Castle is going to split in two, and a giant golden castle is going to rise from the ground. why we love the Yakuza series. It is weird and it's wonderful. So, for this fight here, we have to take care of everybody before we can take care of Pineda. You can see that he's dealt with that. So, if I was on my normal weapon route here, I would probably be on my last weapon and running out around this point, which is not good. Now, in this place, there are traps. These traps are annoying because they can stagger you. And if these enemies, these very, very specific enemies, stand on those traps, they will actually backflip and have high frame, no, not high frame, high frames for the entirety of their animation. And that happens a lot here, and that's how you can lose runs. <laughs> it, this place has, basically this place has a whole bunch of like unique enemies, and it's really brilliant. Uh, it has a very unique boss as well. Those who know this game know what boss is coming up, and for those of you who haven't seen this game before, I hope you get excited for the boss that's going to appear at the end of this chapter, because it is phenomenal. Like, if I said what it was, you wouldn't believe me. What's the thing missing from this run so far? That's right, 
a shooting segment. So we're going to take care of Crudiata first. I'm going to go down here and take care of these two before they walk up and hit me off of this. This is actually one of the places on Legend difficulty that's actually really dangerous. Because everybody, everybody here pretty much has like hyper aggressive AI. And they'll continually shoot you while you're on the minigun. And they, everybody tries to attack you. It isn't like one at a time. Like everyone tries to attack you. So legend difficulty, like even just casually legend difficulty here is actually really hard. Now, we have to take care of everybody before Kunieda the first time. This time around we're doing it differently. We need to take care of Kunieda first because his mid fight QTE actually respawns half the enemies in this segment. Do not go back. Thank you. Come here. You broke my crowbar. How dare you? Uh, am I going to use the sword? I'm going to use the sword. Oh no, please get out of the corner. No, 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 no. Okay, good. So if they use an attack like that, which this is a flashbang that stuns me, um, because they did that, I could actually hit him. And now here's the boss. I hope you enjoy. Because, uh... Yeah. Yeah. This... This is actually happening. We have to fight these tigers. This is one of the things people were really excited about when the remake of this was first announced. So what you want to do is you want to start off by doing a strong lunge, because that first tiger goes at you. And you see that my HP bar just dropped. I'm actually in genuine danger of potentially dying. Because these tigers have... These tigers will basically keep going really aggressive, and they have one move where they will constantly leap at you over and over again. You know, just carry, you know, casually... You know... Punching a tiger. Kicking it as well. This this is, again, the reason why people love this series. Please stay nice. I'm going to have to dodge. Yeah. He's doing it. Triple attack. Yep. Okay. My sort of ran out, so I'm kind of glad that missed. The spears in this room are an okay weapon to pick up if your weapon route has gone horribly wrong at this point and you need something for the last couple of chapters. Their damage is high. Their attack pattern's not that great. They're really good at dealing with, like, mass group of enemies. But for the most of the rest of this run, and we're about to go into chapter 13 of 15, for the rest of this run, most of the most of the enemies we're going to be encountering are basically one-on-one -on -one fights. Um, so we're going to be heading back to AoE. Kaoru has disappeared again because she's found a note from her mother. And in the meantime... Don't slide and power, I don't need to hit. <laughs> New stamina out. Because, obviously, she's gone, we're going to spend the time with Haraka. I believe in the original Yakuza 2, you could actually skip this bit. But in Kiwami 2, because Kiwami means extreme, we're going to be hanging out with Haraka. So, we're going to be going back and forth. We're going to be going to see this music producer who wants to turn Haraka into an idol. At which point, Haraka says that she doesn't ever want to become an idol. And whilst we do that, I'm going to throw it over to our wonderful host yet again for some more wonderful donations. Well, you're in luck because Nugget sends $50. It oh. says, the, the Yakuza series taught me that if you believe in yourself, you can become anything you want, even a real estate developer, even if you're a chicken. Godspeed, Froob. We also have $15 from Greena from Minnesota, who says, getting that Majima incentive first means more time to reach the Half-Life Alex incentive. Remember to manually select the incentive when you go to donate. And where are we on that? We have... Oh, uh, we're almost there. We're at $19,127.74 out of 27. I think that's going to happen. Ooh, get that money in. That. Yeah, let's Once see Once we that. get that in. And we can also... Uh, we are also at uh, $25,160. Uh, and 45 cents out of 90,000 for Half-Life Alex. So let's get let's get all those donations in, just all of them, all of them simultaneously. Let's go. Yep, I love that logic. If we get the Majima Saga, we have more time to try and get Half-Life Alex because I want to see Half-Life Alex. I really want to see Half-Life Alex. So let's let's try and get that done. I think I have enough muscle soda for the next couple of chapters. I ran way more than enough. So I'm just again marathon safety, like gonna make sure that I just have full. Essentially, this is our penultimate drink uh, supply. We don't need any more than this. We're going to, like, slightly calm things down a little bit. Uh, things are going to go a little slower for the rest of the game. Apart from the end of this chapter, we have a... Oh, that's an interesting place one. That's fine. 
We got away from it quick enough. Um, <laughs> so, added on to Haruka's kind of little um, become an idol sub story here, we're going to go to Stigil to find this lady here who's actually a singer. Um, and we're basically going to introduce that producer that you just saw in one of the cutscenes to the singer there. He, there's a little fun thing with this singer actually, where if you skip this cutscene on the correct frame, her singing actually stays in the background. Uh, for pretty much the rest of the game until you close the game down. It's quite nice. They, they, we're basically just going to go back here. It's going to trigger the cutscene with the producer. And after that, everybody's going to be happy. And then we're going to make the decision to head back to Camarocho. So we head back to the bar and then we'll get into our next little set. Uh... I need to equip the gun and I need to equip the crowbar that I still have remaining. Because I think I'm down, I'm down, uh, if I remember rightly, I'm down a crowbar, I'm about to be down another crowbar, and I need the gun for this bit. You don't strict, wait, you don't strictly need the gun for this next bit, but this next bit is the reason why I picked up the gun all the way back in chapter 3. It's only, I usually do this in my own PB attempt just for safety, because in the next thing, in the next part, Things can happen. Just that's things can happen. So here comes our next big set piece. We're going to be heading back to Camarucho and we get attacked by the Jimon Mafia. So one of the big benefits to the Dragon Engine is the ability to do this. Bye. <laughs> you can just grab the enemies and throw them off the truck. So here come a bunch more enemies. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and menu. I'm going to use that. I actually did equip my crowbar from before, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to equip that for... I didn't pick up the gun. Oh, man. Why didn't I pick up the gun? Right, got my back. Right, correct. Okay, so you're going to see how you're supposed to do this legit. So the reason for the gun is coming up now. <laughs> because we have a couple more enemies that are here. One of these enemies is on that box truck over there, and we can't actually reach him. So, he's going to throw grenades at us. We can throw those grenades back, or we can use one of these guns. I'm going to have to... That's going to stun me. Oy. He's being very aggressive with those today. Uh, I needed to throw that gun before this fight started, but I also had to get away from the grenade. <laughs> Here comes a nice, lovely... A nice, lovely boss with two HP bars, which... Hey, you know the drill at this point. Just like that. I got the wrong weapon. Hold on. That doesn't seem safe. That, that definitely doesn't seem safe. You know who we haven't seen in a hot minute? It's your friend and mine. It's the man in black. Here he is yet again. Just on this moving truck. Now, I'm going to warn anybody who's, again, a bit squeamish, you might want to look away from this cutscene. Because, uh, we're going to have a little scrap with the man in black on top of this truck, and, uh, yeah. Ouch. And that's the end of the man. So, as we get back to Camarocho, we get a phone call saying that Date and the florist have been taken hostage over in... Don't do that, you've got the stamina, remember? <laughs> Date and the florist have been taken hostage over in the Millennium Tower. This is the spy that the florist was talking about way earlier. Now, this is an interesting place one. This is fine. Yeah, that's fine. So, you have a couple of ways again. When you have an NPC partner with you in Kaoru or Date, you can also speak to them. That doesn't despawn the enemy, but it does de-aggro them. If you look at the mini-map on the bottom right, you can see there's a whole bunch of enemy spawns, so we want to make sure we don't get into that. Otherwise, we have to get into that fight. And I'm going to use the rest of this saw now, because, the, again, the saw is new as of two weeks ago, thanks to Tapioca finding that. Tapioca is the current world record holder of this. He's, his run is fantastic. So this is Kurohashi. Kurohashi is a member of the Tokyo PD, and his real name is, uh, well, his real uh, actual status is he is a, mem a surviving member of the Jinwon Massacre. One of the last remaining. 
I'm the... Unfortunately, we didn't get the amazing Kurahashi. If you hit Kurahashi at the exact right angle into the bench at the back, Kurahashi will literally, I'm not joking you, light away. It is phenomenal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm keeping the sword. Everyone here should go down in one hit anyway. And that is the end of that. So, basically he's been using his position uh, to conceal the Jingwon's operations. And Kurahashi basically took everybody hostage only for us to basically save them. That was one of the scenes from the very beginning that you didn't see. That lady uh, and her son, Karara actually um, married Suyon. And Karara and Suyon had a daughter. I think you can see where this is going. But then that leads to the question of who is Suyon's son? And the thing is, when the Jingwon came to Suyon to get her to carry on their legacy of revenge against the Sojo clan, Suyon decided to say no. And because of that, they killed Suyon, and Kaoru gave away both Kaoru and Suyon's son to make sure that they stayed safe. Now, we're going to head around Kamurachu a little bit here. We're going to go find uh, Kaoru, who has... I did it, didn't I? I went to the wrong taxi again. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Cool. I'm glad I took this plan pair. Now, let's go to Tenkaichi Street. I'm, I'm not just, you know, delaying this run so that you can get more donations in to meet Half-Life Alex. Thumbs up. <laughs> Whoops. Um, to cover for my actual mistake, um, uh, LLK, are you, are you there? <laughs> w would you like to say a couple of words? <laughs> Dark, oh no. <laughs> so we're supposed to get to Stardust when we get not Stardust. We get supposed to get to Serena when we get to Serena. We find Kaoru. Um, <laughs> whoops. So Kaoru is going to go and work on finding so, um, out who Suyon's son is. I, I might be walking over what you're saying right now. Is finally um, awake in I'm Street. experiencing a slight now, technical difficulty. Can't quite hear you in a right Discord. There, I can hear you in the, the, the stream. Actually, uh, actually, I am looking to fix this right now. So I guess just keep talking about Yakuza. Might respawn up here. So I'm keeping an eye on my mini map. Good. It is there, but it's going the correct direction that we want to see. So we're going to be going here in Dokimoto's. And Kazuki was held hostage by the Jingwon for a couple of months, and Kazuki overheard something rather unfortunate. The Jingwon have planted bombs all over Kanarocho. So it's also the eve of Ryuji taking over Kamarocho with the Goryu. That's a moth. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Bunch of moths just coming in tonight. So again, good thing about having this fight spawn on me is that this fight spawn ahead of us isn't going to bother us, as you can see. That only started being a thing as of Yakuza 0, which is rather unfortunate because certain Yakuza games have kind of nasty fight spawns. I'm not going to name names Yakuza 5, but certain Yakuza games have certain street corners that can literally have up to 5 or 6 fight spawns in one corner and if you get one fight spawn you have to do them all i love yakuza 5 so much but uh yakuza 5's fight spawns are kind of nasty in a speed running perspective so once again there's your boy majima again keep donating we can see the majima saga we are coming up to the end of the run the next chapter after this one is the penultimate chapter or is this the penultimate chapter i've forgotten this is the penultimate chapter actually um, so keep getting those donations in. We're going to go with Daigo down to Purgatory. Um, we're going to go see the florist. The florist has set up shop back in his old office. Because Majima is still constructing Kamurocho Hills. Yes, Majima is constructing an entire building. Don't know who decided that was a smart idea, but here we are. And as we enter, the florist laments about the fact that he wished that the old system was kept up. And wouldn't you know it, Majima here did keep the old system going. So... We're going to get free phone calls here. Our friends all around the city are going to be getting into trouble because the Goryu clan are starting to attack them. And we're just going to be running around Kamurocho for a while helping people. So for the next couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to send it back to our wonderful host yet again to see if they have any more donations. I'm beginning to wonder if I got disconnected from Discord, you know. <laughs> I 
did get us connected on Discord. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> So I'm just going to use a muscle soda here to try and hit this guy. Hopefully somebody notices that I got disconnected from Discord. Uh, job, mate. Oh, this guy is being a problem. This is where you want to go for this guy first. And again, cancel out my combo or cancel out my stagger with that. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry about that. And we're going to run over to Dokimoto's now. I don't know. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, hello. Hello, sorry about that. <laughs> Dis Distor Discord goofed. I don't know what happened there. That yeah, was sorry, sorry about that. Um, well, yeah, I was going like... to throw it over to you for donations anyway, so go nuts. Go absolutely nuts. <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry about that earlier. Everyone's like, hey, let's have donations. Where'd everyone go? Um, <laughs> so uh, I did want to say that the Majima Saga run has been met. Hey. So thank you so much, everybody. Yay, happy. Thank um, you all so very much. So, um, and as Froob knows, we really want to get the Half-Life Alex run met. So uh, that's currently sitting at twenty-six thousand six hundred and forty-five dollars out of ninety thousand. So let's let's get that train going. Um, now, would you like a, would you like a one extremely long donation comment? Yeah, go <laughs> for it. Been sitting here for a while. All right. So Valer sends ten dollars and says, "Hey Froob, please remember and don't get the machine gun kiss and serve everyone the right amount of judgment." <laughs> Don't be a baka matai and remember the Kamurocho lullaby because I have you to times three shine as Heartbreak Mermaid. It's a brand new stage for Yakuza to be like a butterfly. It's pure love and Kamurocho with a maiden colored life in the Yakuza speedrun community. So get to the top as long as you're happy and show Majima no Maji Rock tonight restart from this night. Yes, I implemented a lot of Yakuza karaoke songs in this weird text. Not sure if it makes any sense, but here it is. Let's go, Froob. You got this, as always. A true Dame Dame moment is if we don't meet that incentive for the Majima Saga. So let's go and donate for Majima Saga. I don't have much money, but the friendly Yakuza from my neighborhood have me <laughs> gave me 10 bucks to spend here. Greetings from Germany. It's not often that I'm left speechless. I mean, you've all been hearing how much I can waffle on during the speedrun, but... Wow. <laughs> that That's impressive. That is very impressive. <laughs> and yes, thank you all very much for the generous donations. Um, I really, really want to see Half-Life Alex. We have the entirety, obviously, as well. We have Majima Saga now. We also have the entirety of um, the Ocarina of Time randomizer, which is coming up. And that is going to be actually really good fun. That's going to be very good fun. I've done a couple of OOT randos myself. I know Raikaru and Barrel are actually amazing. Um, I'm going to very quickly here. We actually have a waiting section here. We have a three minute waiting section where we can't do anything. As I said earlier, I'm just going to show off because I really love these games. If you go into the Club Sega, for instance, there's Virtua on. Some UFO catcher over there. We go upstairs, there's some darts. We've got some Virtua Fighter 2. There's other mini games around. Everyone knows about the karaoke. Unfortunately, karaoke pauses the timer. So I can't do karaoke right now. I apologize about that. Otherwise, I would. Um, but other than that, yeah, we've got a time waiting segment here. Tapioca actually found out a way to finally skip it in this engine. But unfortunately, it doesn't work with any percent. And I don't think it works with New Game Plus either. It works the exact same way that we have with a previous bit of tech in Yakuza 0, where you can store up the time that you wait, and then load in a different game, load up a different game, wait, and then load up a different game, and it actually like gets rid of that time completely. I, I was doing that to despawn the enemies. And now for the most exciting part of this speedrun. We're going to sit and stare at this door for two minutes whilst we wait for a phone call. So I'm going to once again, now that Discord is working again, send it back to our amazing host for more donations. <laughs> All right, awesome. We have a, a an anonymous $25 donation who says, let's get a $5 donation train going to see Majima Saga and Half-Life Alex. Here's for me and four other people. I have never played or seen a Yakuza game, but I'm so happy to watch Froob crush this game while giving amazing analysis and storytelling at the same time and making it all look seemingly effortless. Love the positive energy and all that everyone is doing for a great cause. Um, let's see. What we, we have an anonymous $500 donation. That makes me happy. I like that. No comment. Uh, but thank you so much. 
Uh, let's see. Judgment Kazzy sends $50. It says, I fell in love with the series when I gave Yakuza 0 a try on a whim, and I haven't looked back. Super psyched to see that there's a speedrun community for the Yakuza games. Good luck. And the money is going to see more of that sweet, sweet Mad Dog Majima Chan. You guys still waiting on this phone call? <laughs> All right, Charles sends a hundred dollars. Uh, it says, "Great to see the Yakuza series at a GDQ, as well as Fru, one of my favorite speedrunners." Donation goes to seeing the Mad Dog get the spotlight he deserves. Mina sends thirty dollars and says, "I love Majima, so naturally I want the Majima Saga run. Been watching for years, and I am very thankful to be able to catch it this go around. Love you all." We have more donations somewhere here. Here we go. The other John from Sega says, uh, sends $100 and says, It's so surreal see seeing Yakuza at GDQ. Now let's get that Majima Saga incentive locked in. Love your charisma and charm, Froob, even though you skip all our dialogue. <laughs> best of luck with the best of the run. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> I, I wish we could show off more of the games. If there's something that's really great about the old engine, it's that certain boss introductions, aka all the good ones in Yakuza 0, aren't skippable. You know, the likes of Yakuza 2, for example. Such a good boss fight. Such a good boss fight. And actually, let's get let's try and get donation train going for Half with Alex. Yeah, I want to hear about everybody's favorite boss fights in the Yakuza series. Get us some five dollar donations do and tell me, yeah, tell me what your favorite boss fights are. All right, you heard the man. Let's get some win. five dollars donations and talk right. about your favorite Yakuza boss fights, and and we'll read them. They send them to me. Yep. So we're now actually enter entering into the finale. Kaoru sent us a message from Camaro PD Ooh. where she found out who her brother is. And you can probably guess that it's a certain Yuji Goda. And now, this is our final big massive set piece of the run. The Jingwon have taken over Kamarojo. You can see that certain places are slightly on fire. <laughs> but that's, again, like I was saying earlier, it's actually a shame. I wish I could show off more of the games in the runs, and it's such a shame I can't. So, we're going to grab this sign first. Hopefully, everybody runs together. That guy in the back is usually a little slow, but that's good. Excellent. Because then that just leaves all of these guys together perfectly. So, we're going to grab our first of our brand new weapons in the finale, which is the Darkwood Sword. It has 56 damage, but 36 durability. I'm going to put that away, and I'm going to pick up the first of the Chinese sabers that are littered around the finale. We want to take at least one, if not two of these. But I'm going to take care of this group of enemies. I'm actually going to safety moss over here. I don't really need to. Oh, okay. That's bad. Now I've realized what I've messed up, and I know the other Yakuza runners are probably aware of what I've done as well. So, I need to have filled up my muscle soda before we got here. That's going to make this a little slow. Thankfully, Crowbar is still good here. Uh, there was a Chinese saber that I want to grab here. Well, it's... Hello, you. What are you doing here? So again, Citrus is unfortunate. Citrus isn't as good, but we just have to make do because of my mistake. I, I, okay, you ready for this? That's never happened before. I, I have never, not once, forgotten to get muscle soda. So there you go. You, you, you even get a that's never happened before out of this run. So thankfully, all the normal enemies in this finale are going down in one hit. Why do I keep? Okay, let me think of, let me think now what I have to do in regards to, in regards to, uh, Muscle Soda out. Go free left. Um, don't go to the right here. If you go to the right here, you get stuck into a fight that has free rocket launcher guys. And I'm not joking you, on Legend difficulty, they will stun lock you and keep you chained in the corner. I, I've had a very, very, very bad experience in the past when I've done any percent Legend run that has died because the rocket launcher guys just love to crit you in a corner and you can't do anything this is the beauty of legend runs um because i didn't get my because i didn't get my stamina level three i ran out of stamina right there all, all of the failings of the run are starting to come out in the finale so let me try and just think real quick whilst i deal with i didn't mean to do that but i guess i can equip my swords we're gonna go with actually level 36 here and go with the two chinese sabers because that should be actually that won't be enough considering i've got to use super slider which i don't even have full of either um, how 
I can take care of. I can take care of you to two and terror though. Which means I should have one spare. Okay, so we're going to Kamarocho Hills. Uh, our big fly is going to be on top of Kamarocho Hills rather than the Millennium Tower ones, which is quite nice. A um, whole bunch of enemies are going to spawn in. It's going to take me a little longer to deal with them after that accidental little error. Just being a little worried about my little spider usage. Dodge there because I heard a gunshot coming my way. Two Citrus Cider, three Muscle Soda. Yeah, Should be just enough. Should be just enough. How are you over there? L literally you. Um, I want a Muscle Soda for this. I don't want a Muscle Soda. I'm just going to stick with, stick with this. So, most of these enemies are holding grenades, and sometimes if we hit an enemy that's holding a grenade, Explosions happen. <laughs> Explosions literally will happen. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I would like to get through this fight with this one. Possible. Good. Okay. So as we head up this elevator to the top of Camarucho Hills, here he is once again. He's been hit into a barricade, kicked off of a second floor story, set on fire, hit with a gas canister, had a truck run over him. The man in black. And with this knee, there goes the man in black. <laughs> Gotta hand it to the guy. He's nothing if not tenacious. But that genuinely is the end of him. <laughs> Poor guy. So, usually I'd use a muscle soda here. I used it for that first Right, I'm gonna keep this one going for the next fight because here we go with our final boss rush. Beginning with Ryuji round two. <laughs> Lovely Ryuji has a sword. So do we. <laughs> so our Chinese Saber Witch has 72 damage, which is one of the highest strength weapons we can get in the run. Has 12 hits on it. I should have done the heat attack, but that's fine. But watch how little HP he's gonna have, hopefully, after this. Yep. I could fail this QTE partway through if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna go through all of it just in case. And we just need to hit him once. Perfect. Gets him back. Feel the heat. And there we go. A bunch of plot stuff's gonna happen I'm not gonna talk about because I literally don't have the time to talk about how many plot twists are about to happen. But essentially, you're about to see a character that's gonna look somewhat familiar. He's gonna look exactly the spitting image of a man. Herodot. But actually, his name is Daejim Kim. It is, in fact, Terrida. And his name is Daejim Kim. He is the other surviving member of the Jin Mafia. And this fight is very unfortunate, because Daejim Kim has an unfortunate little glitch that can sometimes happen. Very rare, but it does sometimes happen, because I have a lot of Chinese say on this call. Backstep, massive damage. Yep. This is always a double X QTE. Most of the QTEs in the Axe games are random. This one is always double X. Go straight into this, which will go straight into his field of heat phase. Now, Daejin Kim is a little infamous in the Kiwami 2 speedrun scene because Daejin Kim can break out of this field of heat and shoot you. Thanks, Daejin Kim. Thanks for actually playing nice today. Um, and then we've just got to take care of Daejin Kim's other friends around here. They... Hello, big boss. <laughs> I wonder if that came up on the webcam. <laughs> Even the moths want to get in on this run. So... One more muscle soda. And now we go into the final fight, which has one of the best final fight themes in the entire series. Ignore the giant bomb in the background. Now, this fight is I, exceptionally unfortunate because <sighs> Ryuji round three. We have a very set way that we want to deal with him. And unfortunately, Ryuji round three can lose you up to 45 seconds. So, we're going to get out one of our swords, preferably the one that has the most of the stuff in that fight. Hopefully do the heat attack. Okay, good. Now we want to hopefully hit him when he's on the ground. This is doing more than one HP bar's worth of damage at the point. Good. Final phase of Ryuji, provided we get this QTE done right, which we should. He has a move where if he does this move, and we shouldn't see it now because we've got his HP low enough, if he knocks you to the ground, 
You and Ryuji will kind of wrestle and do a big long QT that will literally cost you 45 seconds. This fight literally hit, can cost you a speedrun. Time is coming up on the final QT here. Oh, if I fail this, it's game over, by the way. Time. Just gonna take a quarter of a second to make sure I hit the right button there. Literally, just like OG Yakuza 2, if you mess up that QTE, that's it. You just die instantly. Doesn't matter how many HP upgrades you got, doesn't matter how much defense you got, it just ends. It's an amazing QTE. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of any percent. Uh, do you want to throw it over to an intermission, or do you want me to just start up uh, Majima Saga? Has Discord died again? Uh, no, it hasn't died. I was, I, was, I, was, I was waiting on someone smarter than me to answer that question. I'm, I'm assuming you do that. Pretty much go straight into it, yeah? Okay, cool, lovely. Right, so we have to go back to the main menu for this. Um... So, the Majima Saga is a side story that is a kind of epilogue to Yakuza 0. Uh, so, don't do this before you do Yakuza 0. Uh, we're going to go on easy again. So, time is going to begin in 3, 2, 1, go. So, Majima Saga is Majima's very own little short story. This is literally a sub 10 minute speedrun. Uh, it's the fastest Yakuza speedrun that's out there. It's set between the events of, hey, there's definitely Terada. Um, it's set between the events of Yakuza 1 and Yakuza 2. That guy there is called Ibuchi. He's actually voiced by Dio. Um, you saw a big giant cart of cash there. What's going on is that Terada is trying to choose his second in command in the Tojo. And he holds a contest to see who can get the most money in a short amount of time. And for all intents and purposes, it looks like the winner is Uematsu. Someone you won't see in this run. Until our lovable Majima walks in with literally a cartload of money. Majima is the winner. Now, Majima, Majima Saga is very different to the main any percent and the main story of this game. You can see on the right there, you can get actually a gift for Kiryu by getting a certain amount of money. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start heading off to our office and we're going to get stopped by these assassins. Someone's clearly upset that Majima won the competition. Now, Majima doesn't have as many moves as Kiryu. Majima can't learn moves. So we have one method of dealing with enemies in the Magic Saga. And that spin to win. So, old Majima here. His spin is his most powerful attack. All the damage comes out at the end. There is situations like this where you don't actually want to spin because the ending of the fight depends on your animation at the end of your move. So obviously doing the spin animation to start off with against that guy, if I killed him, would have taken longer because I would have had to wait for the entire animation to finish before I actually was able to get out of the fight. The other big thing, and you can see it on your mini on the mini map here, just in a second at the top right, you'll see that there are enemies stood on the mini map instead of walking around like they usually are. The Majima Saga enemy spawns are all in set fixed position. So because of that, we have we can basically route out the perfect way to go in the any percent and also the other category for Majima Saga which is all street bosses. All street bosses is a little bit of an offset of Majima Saga. You're going to see here in a second on the right, you can see on the mini map, there's a guy with a bit of a bigger um, exclamation mark. It's that guy right there. They are street bosses. There are nine in Kamurocha and nine in Sonbori. They are spawning in when we get these certain emails. And all street bosses is basically take care of all of them and then go and do the story after that. And it just offers like, offers a whole bunch more bosses, whole bunch of different strategies. Majima is basically his legend form from Zero. He has pretty much a couple of the same moves. He even has his, his super high strong powerful counter, which would work really well against bosses if Majima's bosses didn't use guns, as you'll see in a minute. So unfortunately Majima's family uh, were attacked by a mysterious organization. We thought it was Uematsu. So we went to the Uematsu family office because we thought, you know, because we won, he's probably a little jealous. Uematsu's dead. It wasn't Uematsu. So we report that, and unfortunately, things are going a little downhill for our lad Majima. So, Majima is being set up. So we're going to head back to Kamurocho, and unfortunately on the way out, we are going to find a disgruntled group of Uematsu family members. So I think you know exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to spin. We're going to spin a lot. 
second. So hopefully, I don't like the fact the other one is moving away, which is a shame. We wanted this guy to be here, because if we could do this in three combos, that would be nice. Sometimes it takes a little more. So I'm going to take care of this guy. Nice, he ran into my move. That's good. I was hoping he'd do that. Um, obviously, if, if you're in a fight, and this goes for the any percent as well, if you're in a fight and you have, like, a number of enemies in one spot and then, like, a solo enemy in another spot... Just go for the enemies that are together and hope that the solo guy will run towards you. In the old engine, enemies have um, different aggro states. So if you take care of certain enemies, they'll either get like really aggressive or they'll get fearful. Fearful enemies won't come towards you, aggro enemies will. So you can use that kind of knowledge in other Yakuza speedruns to make sure that enemies actually run towards you. Here in the new engine, you just have to kind of wing it a little bit and just hope. Um, but we we basically know, hopefully, hopefully what's best. Um, the last three street bosses appear here. We're going to go to the forest to see who went into Uimatsu's office to kill him. And unfortunately, that young lad Kawamura, who's part of our family office, was seen leaving and entering the Uimatsu family office. And he's seen going to Sotenbori. So once again, Majima finds himself in Osaka. And of course, much like Yakuza 0, we're going to head back to the Grand. Obviously, if you've played Yakuza 0 or not, Majima used to be the manager of the Grand for pretty much, not the entirety of 0, but for like three quarters to halfway of 0. Um, part of Majima's massive plotline from that, so I won't go too far into it. Um, but basically, we get into the VIP section. We ask around about a couple of things, and as we leave, here comes some more mysterious assassins. So, would you believe what I'm about to do? Unbelievably, I'm about to spin. So Majima does have a heat attack. I was hoping the others would get closer. That's unfortunate. Majima has a heat attack that does attack free enemies, but unfortunately it's a quite lengthy one to speed run. But the actual like casual game is really cool, it's really good fun. It's the same one as his You dodged that? Nice! Good dodge! It's the same one in his, his uh, heat move from his legend mode in Zero. So essentially, Majima has kind of a kind of a mixture of his legend mode and his breaker style. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as good as breaker style in Zero because Majima. We have a saying in Yakuza Zero speedruns in that breaker is broken because Majima's breaker style is ridiculously broken and it's great. So we come here to f to find the old rival uh, Cavalry Club Odyssey, but it's ha it's under new management, but the old management of Odyssey is still around. And we get into a little bit of discussion with him, and he says to us to go and get a massage from a place that many Zero players will remember that goes by the name of Hakushi Kaikan. Majima obviously has a bit of trepidation after the events of Yakuza Zero and doesn't want to go to Hakushi Kaikan, but goes there in the end anyway and goes to get a massage. And I have to skip one of these cutscenes because unfortunately it does mute the mod. <laughs> the one coming up after this. We're actually in the final chapter of the Magic Saga already. As I said, very fast run. You'll notice there a very familiar character that goes by the name of Makata Nakamura. Majima stoically walks off and we find out, we get a phone call that Kawamura is actually in the ground. And this is the reason why this is kind of like a, a nice little left log to zero, and I'm not going to spoil why, but you should play it for yourself. <laughs> and we're going to head into the ground and we're going to get into our final two bosses. So Kawamura has unfortunately done something stupid. And unfortunately, he is being blackmailed by someone into killing everybody and is now making a really bad decision and is going to try and kill us. So this is the problem I have, is that most bosses use guns. Now, with the Majima side, do you remember what I said earlier? If a boss goes down on the ground, if they get up like that, we can spin straight away. You actually managed to get out of that. That's actually impressive. Who else has that happened? Um, essentially, if a boss doesn't move like that after you spin into them, you need to make sure you do your heat back. It repositions the boss and resets their dodge and guard counter. And the person who is Black Man Kawamura is... Dio himself, Ibuchi. So here we get the final fight. You get to see a really cool cinematic. But being a character in a side story, Ibuchi here has one of the best counters in the entire Yakuza series. And it's terrifying. I'm not even joking about that. Yup. 
So, we're going to get into this. For the most part, Ibushi can bring out his counter pre-heat form, but he usually doesn't. He usually, when he goes into his pre-heat, when he goes into his heat form, he's going to go very, very aggressive. So, we're going to try and hopefully keep him in a corner, if possible. His dodge, as you can see, is a little bigger than everybody else's. No, 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 no. <laughs> no thank you, Ibushi. So, he's going to be going, as soon as we get into the yellow uh, of his health bar, he's going to be going into his heat form. That's his now normal combo, where he'll kick twice and then shoot. Now, his counter, literally, if he decides to do it, will literally interrupt our spin. It's one of the most frustrating counters in the entire series. It's absolutely boring. Like, it's so simple, and yet it's so good. I'm hoping he doesn't show it, but he... There it is. <laughs> there it is. And you can see from that that it just takes a whole bunch of time. So time is going to be coming up on the final hit, which I don't think is this. Not enough damage. He stands in the corner because he's not standing up, so I know where to attack. And one last. No. <laughs> of course, he's playing nasty. Time. <laughs> Woo! Good old Ibuchi. Good old Ibuchi. So, uh, chat was talking about how your time for the, the main campaign was uh, 152.54. Is, is that a PB? That is not a PB because I PB'd pre marathon, I believe. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, I did a practice run before this, and uh, I I don't actually know if it was actually shorter or not. Um, let me just double check real quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. But while I'm checking real quick, I want to thank GDQ for allowing me to do our first GDQ run of Yakuza. It's been an absolute blast and an absolute pleasure. Thank you all so very, very much for that. Um, my PB in my any percent is a 153.06, unfortunately. But I do believe that's a PB for Majima Saga. Even with the Ibuchi attack, so excellent. Um, so once again, uh, stick around. Coming up next is the Ocarina of Time randomizer by Wooden Barrel and Raikaru. Let's try and get Half-Life Alex met during that, shall we? Once again, thank you all to your amazing support. Uh, shout out to the Yakuza community. Again, we actually have a Discord. You can find it on the speedrun.com page. Shout out to my fellow Yakuza runners, especially uh, the people who have been helping with the reroute this week, including Tapioca, uh, Jose Kuro, etc. Thank you all very much. And yeah, once again, thank you very much, GDQ, for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right, thank you so much, Froob, for that run. That was amazing. Um, we have a we have a one hundred and fifty dollar donation from John Freeman, who says it is a good day to do what has to be done by me and help Alex to defeat the enemies. Extremely good. All right, uh, Off Officer Majima gives a $25 donation. It says, only a $5 train will be intense enough to make sure that this GDQ is the strongest of all. And with that, we're going to go over to a brief Twitch ad, so stick around. We will be right back. Sound good. 
Yeah. All right, so I am just letting you know where we stand on the Half-Life Alex incentive. Uh, we are currently sitting at $28,325.45 out of $90,000. Please donate. That will be the first VR game to be run at a GDQ. It's going to be super cool. Uh, and also, just one quick last uh, note for me. Uh, if you go to Fangamer.com, you can buy a virtual attendee badge designed by someone who is super cool and awesome that is totally the best person in the world It sometimes and can do things like shoot laser beams out their eyes and fly. I heard that somewhere. Um, uh, if they get up to 500 uh, sales of the Giga Badge, which is the Tier 3 Badge, then all of the, the Giga Badges will be converted to Rainbow Foil, which is much shinier, much more rainbowy. So if you're into shiny rainbows, then you can pick yourself up uh, one of those by the end of the week. And uh, that will do it for me. I think I'm going to get out of here and just watch the rest of the event unfold. Uh, until then, we're going to throw it over to a prize segment featuring the lamp. And I guess sent too, if, if he's there. I guess. Oh, oh th th thank, thank, you, Evo. Okay, yes, the, the lamp is here. Do, do not worry, everyone. The lamp is safe. Uh, but my name is Sent, and I am here to tell you all about some of the amazing prizes that you could win by donating tonight. Now, the prizes we're going to talk about tonight are available uh, from the start of that Ocarina of Time run. So right now, get your donations in until the end of Call of Duty. Uh, which is going to be a little bit later tomorrow morning. But before I talk about some of the prizes, I do have one question for you. Is this a common occurrence in your household? Or are you frequently like, hey, Mom, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? Uh, chicken, beef, delivery, your choice. Uh, okay, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Don't, don't let that happen. Uh, because thanks to an anonymous donor, you could instead browse through the Overwatch cookbook. Yeah, the Overwatch cookbook. It's got really cool recipes uh, from Overwatch, you know, inspired by the different characters. There's actually some really cool stuff in here. We saw some, um, uh, what were they? They were like bird-shaped pretzels. There's a ramen recipe in there. Um, there's all kinds of, of great stuff in here. It's super cool. It's a $10 minimum donation sent to us by an anonymous donor. Uh, thank you so much. Here, Mom, do you want, you want to borrow this real quick? Maybe thumb sure. through it? Uh, now, some other great books we have from our friends over at Fangamer and Legends of Localization. We have The Legend of Localization, Volume 1, uh, Zelda. So The Legends of Localization is a really cool book uh, by Clyde Mandolin, and it kind of goes into the localization process of uh, different games. This one is about the original Zelda for NES. It talks about all of the different things that had to be changed both in text uh, and in visual form to make the game make sense uh, in you know for Western audiences, but also to kind of meet Nintendo's standard of quality for Western audiences uh, back at the time. There were a lot of things that were more acceptable in Japan in their eyes that were not quite as acceptable in the West that needed to be changed or reworded or completely reworked to make more sense. It's a really interesting read. Um, I'm a huge fan of this series, and this is only a $5 minimum donation. You could win this book for a $5 minimum donation. Um, don't worry, it comes with a dust jacket normally. This is actually my copy. I pulled it off my shelf uh, just to be a little bit faster and not worry about uh, damaging the spine or anything, uh, but your copy will come with a beautiful dust jacket as well. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? We have so many great prizes. Uh, for a $15 minimum donation from our friend El Gui, we have this absolutely beautiful hand-drawn picture of Velocity as the Doom Slayer. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to say anything about this. Just, just look at it. Look at it. $15 minimum donation. This is truly a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork. What more could you ask for? It is beautiful. Uh, so thank you so much uh, to Elgi. I when I, when I saw this in my inbox, I was 
I was just blown away. Again, $15 minimum donation from now until the end of Call of Duty. Get those donations in. Uh, now from my good friend and host, uh, occasionally of SGDQ 2020 online, Iggy Zig, we have this absolutely beautiful stained glass heart container from the Legend of Zelda series. Mom, I mean, you, you'd hang this up in your window, right? I absolutely would hang that up she, in my window. She has no idea what Zelda is, and she loves this heart container. Okay, she knows what Zelda is. She's, she's making faces at me off camera right there. Uh, but it, it's beautiful. It captures the light really well. Let me see if I can... Uh, uh, it's probably not going to show up on camera nicely, but it is, it is beautiful hanging in a window, hanging in front of a... Here, I'll put it in front of the lamp for everyone. It's your two favorite things. It's stained glass artwork, and it's the lamp. Um, $20 minimum donation. Huge shout-outs to Iggy Zig for making that happen. It's beautiful. I want it. My mom wants it, but my mom can't win it because she's related to me. You guys have to win it at home by donating. Now, also from Iggy Zig, we have this absolutely beautiful wall-hanging decoration of the Triforce from the Legend of Zelda series. It's, it's amazing, right? You got, you got the Triforce, the three golden triangles, and of course you have uh, the pearls from Wind Waker of the respective deities. Yeah, you know, Din, uh, Pero, and Nairu. Uh, the whole thing just, it, it looks amazing. It's the kind of thing that I would love to have hanging in my room. It's a $25 minimum donation. So a $25 minimum donation is going to get you entered into everything I just talked about and more. There are more prizes. There are always more prizes. In fact, I got one more great prize I want to show you real quick. But first off, thank you so much to Iggy Zig for that. Again, $25 minimum donation to be entered into that and to be entered into all of the prizes that are available just for this block, but from our friends over at Bethesda, they actually just today got me an amazing Bethesda prize pack. It comes with a couple of Doom themed shirts here. You know, we got Rip and Tear. Rip and Tear until it's done, of course. Uh, we have a Doom uh, 64 shirt here, I believe. Let me see if I can hold it up in the correct orientation. There we go. I figured out how to do shirts, Mom. It only took me 30 years. <laughs> are you proud of me yet? I'm very proud. I'm, I'm, I'm so, so glad. Proud. Uh, a Doom Eternal hat. Like, look at this. It's a Doom Eternal hat. Uh, you also, of course, get a Doom Eternal glass. There's even more than this. There's a Doom Eternal dog leash. You could have Doom Eternal on everything. There's uh, a Skyrim commemorative coin. And, of course, this absolutely beautiful replica of a reliquary jar from the Elder Scrolls Online Greymore. All of this could be yours if you win it by donating $20 from now until the end of Call of Duty. All of that, again, two different shirts, the hat, a dog leash, a glass, the imitation reliquary jar, and a commemorative Skyrim coin. Again, $20 minimum donation. And of course, we can't talk about prizes without talking about our grand prize. Again, $25 minimum donation, gonna get you entered into everything we talked about, but a $200 donation throughout the marathon is gonna get you entered into that grand prize. Head over to gamesdonequick.com, check out the tracker. You're gonna see all the information you need to know about it. It's a custom replica from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. So many great options you get to pick from. A Zora guitar bass, a Master Sword in several different styles, including a Dark Link style, uh, the Fierce Deity Sword from Majora's Mask, the Buster Sword from FF7, the options are amazing. You got to go check out all the pictures and all the information that's in the tracker. Um, now, before I go, there's one more thing I need to tell you about because it's an important thing to talk about. So throughout the month of August, Games Done Quick is donating all the revenue we receive from subs and bits right back to Doctors Without Borders, to Médecins Sans Frontières. Um, and that means that the portion of the subs and bits we receive, minus any taxes we need to pay on them, going right back to the charity for this event. Now, here's the thing. When you get in on those uh, hype trains, when you throw in your subs and bits, you're effectively helping the charity. But more importantly than that, uh, if you have Amazon Prime, and I know a lot of you have Amazon Prime. Mom, you have Amazon Prime, right? Yes, of course. So why haven't you used your Amazon Prime, connected it to a Twitch account, and used that Prime Gaming to give a free subscription to any channel on Twitch, which could be Games Done Quick, and the channel still gets the revenue, which means we can donate our portion of the revenue right back to charity. I have no good answer for that, now, except that I don't know how to do it. You know what? And we'll go through it tomorrow, just so you do. Okay. Uh, but until then, everyone, come on. There's no reason not to. If you have Amazon Prime, you have a free sub, go for it. And uh, if you have you know, friends, family, relatives that aren't using their Amazon Prime for that, maybe talk to him about it like I just did with my mom. It's that easy and it helps the charity. It's a huge importance. Anyway, I think that's just about going to do it for me. I'm super excited for this Ocarina of Time randomizer run. I actually made the seed and I am waiting to see 
how this goes. This is either going to be really quick, or we might be slightly going over estimate. We're going to find out. So, uh, hey, so Mom, which one of those recipes did you want to make for dinner? I uh, don't think we have most of the ingredients for this stuff, but I'll look into it. Uh, all, all right, I, I guess we'll go with chicken. Thank, thanks. Um, all right, everyone, so that's going to be it for me. We're going to throw it back as we get ready for Ocarina of Time Rando. It changes a lot how this game is played, so get hyped for that. In the meantime, I will get to some of your donations. We have an anonymous $100 donation. Thanks to all the runners and folks who made this amazing event happen. Let's keep doing good in the world, and let's show the Combine that we mean business. Let's get to that Half-Life Alex incentive. We have $100 from Blue Dresch. Half-Life Alex, yes! I've loved Half-Life since it first came out. I just recently picked up an HTC Vive, and I just had to pick up Half-Life Alex as my first VR game. I flew through it in 20 hours my first time, though, but buffet time can blow through it in 40 minutes? I gotta see this. Put this $100 to the Half-Life Alex run, please. Looking forward to your run, buffet time. And in case you missed it, I am Musical Daredevil. And again, I will be here for our next couple of runs as long as we meet that Half-Life Alex incentive. We have $100 from Ball. I was sitting on my donation, but the incentive for Half-Life Alex got me moving. Could this become the first virtual reality run on GDQ? I hope so. Thanks to everyone working hard to make this event happen. I hope so too, Ball. We also have an anonymous $500 donation. Thank you very much for your generous donation. We also have an anonymous $100 donation, as well as $100 from Sir Rhino and Aramdam, with no comment on those donations. We also have another $100 donation from Andrew Prime, with no comment. We have $20 from Jom91. Hi, all. Just turned 20 as of a few minutes ago, so I figured this would be a perfect time to make my first donation to a GDQ event. Happy birthday, Jom91. We have $30 from Moosey. Love watching the stream. It's cool seeing so much skill in one place. I have three anonymous $50 donations, as well as a $50 donation from Guzi. Thank you again for your generous donations. We appreciate all donations here at Games Done Quick. We also have a $50 donation from Caitlin. 
Good afternoon, SGDQ. Good afternoon to you, Caitlin. We have $25 from Tamburlaine Comic. My first GDQ. I just got into speedruns. Glitch harder, my dudes. Thank you for that awesome haiku. And with that, we are ready to go on setup. So let's head over to Ocarina of Time Randomizer. Howdy, howdy, everybody. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> howdy. <laughs> first thing I'm, I'm so gonna need is a file name. Yeah, we got the file name incentives. Now's the time to cut it off. We need the uh, top two. The top two file names were Lonk and Zelda. All right. All right, which one are you taking, Rai? I am taking Lonk. If I can find the letters for it. Yeah, I wasn't even waiting for him to say I knew which one it was, so I already was typing right, in let's Zelda. Let's take a peek here. <laughs> oh, we are starting with a Shadow Medallion. Yeah, yeah. So it's you want to explain start, that, Barrel? Oh, uh, the starting medallion? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So in the base game, when you go adult, you get the light medallion for free. Well, there's no dungeon for that to be attached to, so the randomizer just gives you a random medallion or stone to start with. And that's what this is. That's why we got the shadow one. It's good. Means maybe we only got to do five dungeons today. Maybe. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. Sent rolled the seed, I just want to say. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you never know. He, he told me it's a fun one. That's all I.